regarding HIP and G, NG stands for next generation and uh, all I've done on this topology is I configured all the uh, interface IP addresses because it might take us a uh, bit time to, con to put all these numbers so I just configured them and all the numbers all the IP address IP version 6 addresses are here and we're going to start configuring trip here and here and uh, we will advertise the default route to R2 and um, yeah let's go and configure it let's go to r1 and actually done actually add the default route already so it's that's just the command you need from the global config so let's go and yeah yeah that's the command you need so and obviously you need to enable um, IPv6 unicasting then configure all the interfaces to um, provide IP address if you want to follow along okay um, let's go and uh, start the configuration and start with IPv6 everything that you're doing in IPv6 you start with IPv6 router uh, rip and I will name it rip ng and that's it I'll exit from here trip is enabled and I will go to the interface that I want to enable uh, let's, let's look at it. interface e, e10 so interface Ethernet 1 slash 0 and I will enable IPv6 trip um, and I will just write down the name I gave the process and I will say enable and that's it all I need to do is just go to the other interfaces what I mean other interfaces not not here I'm talking about these loop bags and I'll inject them to trip so we will see more interesting routing table when we go here and uh, do our uh, verification okay uh, let's go and do that let's go to interface loop back zero and use the up, up key so uh, we don't need to write again and do the same for interface for the loop back one use the up arrow key and enter that's it we injected these two and let's go to r2 here yeah and um, go to assuming that you already configured uh, all the id addresses obviously you have to start with this before you even configure the id addresses and ibv6 router uh, rip uh, rip and ng next generation star trek big fan okay um moving on exit from here and ethernet one slash was it two or one i think it was two. Oh yes one one slash zero and all i need to do is oops why am i right clicking um IDV6 rip rip ng enable and that's it uh, all we that's all we need uh, let's verify show IP route show IPv6 route obviously we can see the the loopback addresses we injected um, these are the loopback addresses I'm talking about to uh, rip earlier from router one so yeah everything is working fine uh, what we need to do is one which is uh, we will inject uh, one more default route to uh, to to rip uh, that goes to the internet so it will be like this we'll inject it here and router 2 will know about it yeah so route 2 will be able to connect to the internet but connecting to the internet is not part of this uh, exercise but all we need to do, all we need to see is the default route in here that has been advertised by, by RIP. But connecting to the internet is a, another thing. Okay, so let's, let's, let's do it. Um, let's go to R1 and configure. Let's go to global config and IBV6 router uh, RIP. And oh, um, no I'm, I'm thinking about something else sorry uh not that uh we need to go inside the interface 
and we need to say IDV6 trip yeah and uh, we need to write down the name we gave and let's use the sensitive help and now we're going to say uh, default information default information and we have two options so these two options um, option one is advertised only on the default route so it will only announce only the default routes and originate means announce dynamic and the default routes so it will uh, originate will do the both but only will only advertise the default routes it will not advertise any dynamic so what we will do is we will start with originate then once we see the result we'll go to and uh, clear the routing table and configure only so we will see the effect yeah so originate enter um let's clear idv6 rip and go to r2 and use some show commands that we used earlier what is going on oh yeah i need to clear it clear ibv6 rip yeah so it will it will come back up Trip is slow, slow, so we need to just wait for it. Let's just go and check here. Uh, show IBB6 protocol. Okay, so all good. Trip. Why, why did I clear it again? Okay, let's go to R2 and see because I was just waiting for it. Yeah, so now what you can see is it injected the default route which is that and it injected the um the other um dynamic uh, routes as well so what i mean is it injected this one is two it advertised this one is two so if if we don't need to advertise this uh those two or three whatever it can be hundred routes we can suppress it and say only and it will only advertise the default route that is pointed to here and um, router 2 will be able to reach these loopbacks obviously but it will not be in the it will not be in in the routing table so all you need to do is just uh do it this way let me let's just configure it. it's better to configure it then talk about it so now now what we have is um originate yeah so we have the default route and we have the dynamic routes so Let's go and uh, let's go inside the interface. Interface Ethernet 1 slash 0. And what we used earlier was originate. Yeah. So now we will use only. Okay. Uh, let's clear the route and clear the route because we cannot wait for trip 30 seconds just so we can see the result. Okay. Let's go up and yeah, let's just wait more for rip. It is a slow program. Yeah, let's go up and see the protocol is up. Show IBV6 route. And we shouldn't be able to see anything anyway, but I'm just checking. And yeah, so you see, it only advertised, uh, connect, uh, it only advertised the default route. It did not advertise anything else. You don't see this on your routing table what you see before where is it uh, I am sure we had it before somewhere here the old one well, yeah so we have it here you see earlier we had these two um, we injected we had these two routes in our table and we could reach them uh, because they were in our um, routing table but now if I bin this IP address, let me just copy this. If I bring it from router 2 to the loopback interface, I should be able to reach it. So let me go to router 2, bing, and yeah, that's success. It, does not, it doesn't mean that it cannot get there, but it's not in the routing table. Uh, you only have the default route. So um, that's good. That is what we need to see. And if you only want to see, um, yeah, we can, we can do more. Uh, verification 
we show ID route and we only need to see the rip routes so it will only show you the rip route which is the default so if you just want to be more specific uh, that's that's all about it thanks for watching configuring basic EIGRB on this topology I have not configured anything on it even the IP address has not been configured yet so uh, what we're going to do is we will uh, start with the HQ router and configure all the interfaces IP addresses and the loopback as well and uh, we will start with router 1 configure the IP address router 2 and router 3 then we will enable uh, autonomous system uh, 100 EIGRB autonomous system 100 and uh, we will see how the neighborship is formed so uh, let's go and um, go to the high HQ router and configure it so let's see if we got any IP address it's nothing so okay config T let's go to global config and I uh, start with uh, serial 2 slash what is it um, two slash 1 and give the IP address okay 172.17.1.255.255.255.255.252 it is slash 30 so no shot okay let's exit and interface oops interface 2 slash 2 and assign the IP address 172.17.2.1.255.255.255.252 okay uh, no shot and let's exit out and go to the last interface on this router which is uh, serial serial 2 slash uh, 3 start with no shot and IP address which is 172.17.3.1.255.255.255.255.252 and we're done with all our serial let's start with the uh, loopback and assign the IP address for it loopback is always up so since yeah the 10.1 255 255 .255 okay uh, let's exit and show ID interface brief and we can see all our interfaces uh, states are up but the protocol is down that's fine uh, because we have not configured the other side and let's save it okay on um, if we go back to the topology we see uh, I see a couple of um, states I've done already so I need to correct this it's just uh, minor things okay so uh, what I will do is I will uh, go to router 1 and configure router 2 and router 3 yeah so let's go and do that okay um, let's go start with router 1 config T interface serial 2 slash uh, 2 slash 1 no shot id address uh, 172.17.1.2.255.255.255.255.252 uh, when we do that we need to bind just to see the connectivity is, is working it should be fine yeah so first two buckets were dropped but that's fine let's go to r2 config t let's go to the interface we need to configure which is 2 slash 2 serial 2 slash 2 and the ib address is the same ib address that we have on there it's 255 255 255 no shot do uh, not do <laughs> i got used to do bing but uh, okay let's do 172.17.2.1 and we should have a connectivity yeah that's fine okay let's go to r3 and configure it interface serial slash zero oops two slash three no shot ip address ip address is 172.17.3.2255.255.255.255 uh, no shot okay should be up 
Okay, it ping 172.17.3.1. That should be fine. Okay, so uh, everything is uh, the connectivity, everything is working fine. So I will start with uh, the configuration of EIDLB and I will start it from here. Then we will go here and configure it and see the neighborship form. Then so on, we'll do here and we'll do it here as well. So let's go and do that. Okay, uh, we're in the HQ route. Okay, so let's go to global configuration mode, router, EIGRB, autonomous system 100. Okay, no auto summary. And uh, I will advertise the route I will inject is 172.17.1.0. Now work 172.17.2.0. I can use a wildcard mask if I want to, uh, but that is CCNA topic, so it shouldn't be a matter of explaining it. You should you should know already by this time. Okay, uh, what we need to inject is this route as well. Okay, uh, 10.0. Okay, so when we have that, we'll say passive interface and we'll just say default. So unless we allow it the interface we allow it will only advertise eigrb it will only form a neighborship with the interface that we want so we want this interface to form a neighbor relationship so this is how we're going to do it. let's let's configure r1 first and we will uh, see the neighborship form so let's go to r1 t okay router EIGRB 100, no auto summary, network, network uh, 172.17.1.0. It should not form any neighbor relationship unless we go here and say no passive interface and define the interface that we want. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I will, uh, okay, let's. I will go here and um, use a debug command to debug EIGRB. So once we do that, we, I want, we want to see the neighborship form. So let's just go inside uh, EIGRB and let's make the neighborship happen. So no passive interface and let's see what we have. Okay, so we have uh, serial serial was it serial two slash one once i press enter the neighborship will form but we will see everything that happened okay okay so is there anything left cannot see anything in here whoops why did i go up okay so let's see here yeah the adjacency that's good so it will tell you in here it will tell you all the process that um how the process happened in EIGRP okay so you see that let's go and um, go to let's enable let's disable this this is a lot of information so let's go to R2 and configure EIGRB router EIGRB 100 network 172.17.2.0 uh, okay let's go to hq and clear here okay and uh, say no passive dot two and the neighborship will form new adjacency let's go cool. that's cool so new adjacency that's good so let's go to r3 so you can basically control how the neighborship form instead of just uh instead of any interface will be form uh, will form neighbor relationship on any direction you can say this interface can only uh, i can only form a neighbor relationship these two interfaces but not this you can just uh, for security reasons you can do that so okay um let's go no auto no auto summary and network 172.17.3.0 and it will not form any neighbor relationship and until we go here and we just allow it and that will form 
so let's go and check our show IB route obviously we will not see anything because we did not inject any new route in the HQ in here so okay uh, show IP protocol so you can see uh, the routing protocol is EIGRB autonomous system 100 and you can see all the metric the weight everything all the case value and okay router ID you can see that I did not set that but it takes the loopback uh, as a router ID so that's fine okay yeah and uh, you can uh, do more verification there's um, a lot of commands that you can use actually uh, EIGRB show IB route EIGRB it will not show you anything because we didn't inject any route so um, okay show IB EIGRB interface interfaces so you can see all the interfaces that is participating EIGRB and um, the other commands you can use this there's a lot of them you can actually use uh, show IB EIGRB traffic and it will show you exactly how many buckets were sent the hellos that were sent and received and the acknowledgement that we got and you can see a lot of things okay that is all about it uh, let's go to router 3 and see show IB route and we will see a couple of dynamic addresses in obviously in here because R R1 does not know anything about this network and this network and R3 does not know anything about these two networks and this network as well so it will have interesting um, routing table okay so you can see that let's go and bring the loopback address of route 1 10.1 should be able yeah so let's ping R1 172617.1.2 uh, should be fine so we have full connectivity okay uh, and one more thing if you really need to know about uh, EIGRB in depth in details um, I suggest you go here uh, this is my website and I put a lot of time into it uh, if you look at the cheat sheets yeah you go EIGRB fundamentalist there is a page that is dedicated for EIGRB and you will know a lot uh, a lot of things about EIGRB it's just basically a cheat sheet that you can print out and know about it and I will be updating every time on this website add more information there and I will be adding updating these videos as well these videos are from CCNA so it will be a mix of CCNA to CCMB level so there will be more video about it uh, about EIGRB so uh, if the link is not here it should be somewhere here on there yeah cheat sheet then you will see everything now I only have three because I'm working on it so uh, I will have more protocols and more cheat sheets about a lot of uh, technology so yeah that's that's about it uh, thanks for watching EIGRB summarization you can do it in two ways either you do it auto or manual so what I mean is, uh, if, if you look at here, what summarization is, if you look at R4 and do show IB route, you will see the routing table of R4 is really big. I mean, imagine these routes are hundreds or thousands. It, it would have been big. So all these routes you see here, these are from num uh, route 1, this is from route 2, route 3, that is our uh, serial links and um, th there is more more if you go down there's more you can see our external uh, network so if you look at the diagram you will even see where i was showing you on r4 these are the links i was showing you on r4 physically this one is so all these are on our routing table in here okay so we don't need all that for r4 what we need is we need uh, to summarize it so all these links can uh, be only just one link instead of four and here can be one link one link here so we'll summarize those three routes and the good thing about EIGRB you can summarize it on the interface so it depends on which interface you want to summarize it you can summarize it on the interface instead of 
let's say uh, on OSPF you can only summarize it on on the ABR so that's not really practical uh, obviously OSPF is really good but it's got that disadvantage as well uh, so let's go and uh, start with uh, auto configuration first and see how it affects the routes so let's go to R1 and go to global config router uh, EIGRB autonomous system 100 that's what we're using and auto summary okay if you go to R4 and if you look at it here we have all that on our um, on our routing table look what will happen uh, when I press enter it will sync obviously and when you go here and you go up enter all the routes like all the 11s they just been um, advertised as a one route which is slash 8 it takes the default um, network which is slash 8 is, is class A so if you remember 11 is class A any network that start from 11 or 10 or 100 they're all class A so there's friend we're not talking about the, the IP address range that's CCNA talking but what I mean is uh, it will take the default uh, subnet mask so uh, if you go back and that is actually always the configuration that you do when you are configuring EIGRB you always put no auto summary okay okay let's exit from there and the other one you do it from the interface so if you go to serial um, 2 slash 1 let's, let me just confirm that yeah so and IB uh, that's the command we use uh, summary address and uh, we will choose the protocol that we need to summarize EIGRB and you can do it here as well the same way and you need to choose the autonomous system then you need to choose you need to put the IP address you want to summarize yeah so if you look at it here all these IP addresses have a, this bit in common so we're going to put that and the rest is zero zero and since we are using a uh, subnet mask which is class C we will um, we will use instead of slash 24 we will use slash 21 yeah so if you remember the binary uh, conversion back in CCNA that will make um, the explanation or understanding very easy okay uh, slash 21 uh, we don't need to put the space if you put the space it will not work so or what you can do is you can always put the full subnet mask if you want uh, 248 slash 21 is 248 obviously Okay, uh, dot zero and press enter and it will do the same job but since now uh, we already done that in slash 21 so if we go to R4 and remember that was slash 8 before here we did not have any summarization remember that was full length so now look what will happen if I go up and show IB route we have only where is it yeah slash 21 one route which is slash 21 so that's much more clean yeah okay uh, let's go and do the same thing on r2 so we will summarize all the routes in here yeah now we're in r2 so by the end of what we, when we do all our configuration you will have the you will see the effect that it have on router 4 because it will have less routes on the routing table so let's go to R4 EIGRB 100 um, no we'll not do that no auto summary uh, we will do it from we'll do manual so let's go 0 slash uh, 2 slash 2 and IB summary address EIGRB 100 the address is 0 to 0 slash 21 I mean you can use it the same uh, okay so that's what I was saying no space yeah so if you if you press enter again it will resync and it will take effect on R4 so if you want to confirm that you can just go and uh, go up and you will see yeah so that's only one instead of all this it was it's just advertise it as a one route so uh, let's go back uh, to r3 and do the same okay uh, interface serial uh, not serial we will advertise it on 
we'll advertise it on this route because we are checking in on uh, on, on route four and we will uh, advertise it on that route we'll summarize it on that route and this route because we are doing it per interface per interface basis so we have to summarize them on both so we can check uh, the HQ router and we will see all the summarization and we can check R4 to see all the routes which have been summarized okay okay so let's go we can even summarize these ones if you want to yeah just compress it down to one route so but R4 will see that effect but we don't we're not doing that we're only doing this four now this three now and uh, let's see configuration is the same okay so um Ethernet one slash zero IB summary IB summary EIGRB one hundred and okay it's one three one zero my one my mind just one plant for a second no space twenty one okay so it will resync that's good so let's just have a look at our routing table it's much more cleaner now there's not a lot of routes so you can see we only have a uh, three routes instead of um 20 routes does that make sense okay i hope it does that's good so um let's go to r3 again because if you look at uh, hq um hq still sees full um routes on r3 but oh um i did that before it should, it should not that should not happen but i did that before that's why it's summarizing but if we Go back and uh, interface serial. Um, is it two slash three? I was doing a uh, configuration before and I did it as just to test it. IB summary EIGRB 100. Um, what was it? Uh, 13.1.0.0 slash 21. Yeah, so. Oh man, I'm I'm in HQ. <laughs> Oops. Uh, okay, so this command I'm kind of mixed up. Uh, this command is going in here. It's not going there. Yeah, because I was um, testing earlier and I did the configuration, the whole configuration that I'm doing now, and I forget to disable that um, command already at there. So what I will do is I will just go to R3, go inside uh, serial two slash three and paste this command and our HQ should not know yeah H, that's the way it's supposed to be yeah that's the way it's supposed to be that's the way it's supposed to see it so uh, if we go back to R3 and do the same command but without the no yeah we should it should resync that's good we should see the summarize route now yeah that's that's the way i expected before but you forget commands sometimes and that's that's life so um let's go and check our let's go see from this perspective of r1 let's go to r1 and see how does it see show id route and yeah so all the routes are summarized look at it that's summarized, that's summarized, and that is, where was that? Oh, that's not summarized, but this is already connected to it. So, and all this, they're not summarized because they are local, they are they are connected routes, so they're not going to be summarized. Okay, that is, that's good. Uh, that's all the verification we need. Thanks for watching. EIGRB stop. On this topology, it's actually the same topology that we're using for EIGRB throughout uh, CCMB route uh, series. Uh, what we have here is on this topology, what we need is we need to make R4 stop. That means, let's say uh, on R3, uh, this link fail. We don't want R3 to ask R4 if R4 have uh, another backup link for HQ because it does not physically we can see it it does not it does not exist let's say there's another router here uh, so if this route if, if uh, r3 ask r4 if you have um, any link for r for hq 
what will happen is HQ, uh, R4 will ask the other router, let's say router uh, 5 is here, it will ask router 5 and router 5 will ask another router and we will start in active mode. So that's not really good. If you, if you routers are stuck in active mode, you will have a lot of uh, issues with um, EIGRB so, and it will not work basically. That's the issue you will have. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do is we will just make uh, router 4 stop. So if R3 want to ask anything on R4 uh, or queries, you will just say, sorry, my, um, I'm a dead end. So don't ask me anything. And the, only, the way we configured, I mean, it's, it's just one command. You only need to understand the concept. So let's configure it. And the way we verify it is you configure it here, but you cannot verify it here. You have to go here and verify it. Then you can, you will know that this route is a stop. So R3 will always know that this way is a stop. Yep, that link. Okay, let's go to R3 first and see what's going on. This lab is just continuation from the last. So, okay, uh, show IB, EIGRB, uh, neighbor uh, detail. So now, uh, yeah, um, I forget to <laughs> undo what I did earlier. It's stop already. So let's just go to R4 and undo it. What we did, EIGRB, whoops, router. EIGRB um, 100, no EIGRB, stop. Okay, so um, that's synced. And if we go back to R3 and do the same command, you see this route, you can see it clearly, it's not stop. Earlier, if you look at it here, it says stop. Yeah, connected and summary. That is when you don't specify anything. Uh, it will just do it by default connect it and the summary routes it will um, advertise so okay uh, the way you do it is you already seen it I mean you just come here and you say EIGRB um, stop that's just one command you need just leave it as it is and enter okay uh, once you do that it will just come here uh, I mean we'll just go back to R3 because we can only summarize we can only verify it in R3 um, okay so uh, if you look at it here it's suppressing the query earlier it was not suppressing that it was just it, I mean it was replying like back and forth with R3 but not anymore it's suppressing everything so that is um, that's all the verification we need thanks for watching EIGRB security you can do it in two ways. Um, either you do it passive interface or authentication. What I mean is uh, passive interface is you can choose uh, which interface you form a relationship with. So um, let's say on we are on router three and uh, you want to form a relationship with uh, both um, routers HQ and R4. So what you can do is instead of forming a relationship with um, R4, you can uh, put passive interface default and here you can put no passive interface defa uh, default serial 2 slash 3 uh, let me show you in practice so you understand what I mean uh, if I go to R3 and uh, go to global config and um, what I can do is go to router EIGRB 100 autonomous system that's our autonomous system we're using we can uh, put the command passive interface and we can use the default and all the interfaces will not participate. Uh, the, I mean, all EIGRB is done on on this route now, uh, unless I go in, I, I go and say no passive interface. So this is how you do it. Okay. So if you if you look at it now to show IB route, there's no there's no adjacency. You see, there's there's no neighborship. Everything here is local. So what you can do is you can say no passive interface and you can choose um, was it a serial link that, yeah serial 2 slash 2 slash 3 you can choose which interface you form a neighbor relationship so you will form a neighbor relationship now with uh, HQ and you will not know any routes from um, from R4 because the interface is passive interface so it will not form any relationship with R4 unless we go here and do the same and yeah 
write down no passive interface and uh, choose the interface that we want ethernet one slash zero i think let me double check that yeah so enter and it will form a neighbor relationship that is uh, one way of doing um, security uh, the other way is uh, creating uh, creating keychain uh, authentication so uh, this is how you do it okay we are in router 3 now and uh, what you can do is you can um, while you in global config you can create a keychain keychain and uh, let's name this keychain abh networking yeah so we can use yeah two billion keys let's just choose one and key string we can use we can say cisco yeah and let's exit out of there let's go to the interface we need to apply to the authentication so what we're going to do is we're going to apply eidrb authentication here on this interface obviously once i i i do that it will not um affect this interface because i haven't applied so i will be forming i will have the relationship with hq but i will not have any relationship with r4 unless i go inside here and do the same command is here and it will form the relationship yeah so uh, let's go and uh, configure it let's go inside the interface that we need uh, which is ethernet one slash zero and we write with ib authentication and we will choose the mode you can always use sensitive help uh, the mode we need and uh, we can yeah we'll use eigrb autonomous system 100 and the encryption uh, we will use uh, md5 message digest enter the neighborhood will fail yeah so that's what i expected to happen because um now on this side of the of of the relationship on this side of the relationship now is is using authentication i have not finished it yet but the neighborhood is down so um I need to finish the configuration here uh, and I will choose keychain keychain and I uh, use EIGRB autonomous system 100 and I will put the one I created the keychain I created uh, ABH not work working space sensitive so it will form the neighbor relationship once I go to R4 and configure the same thing so let me just go to R4 for a second and this is how you configure you go inside you can see i mean authentication fail so we need to uh, configure keychain keychain and uh, we need to give a name same name abh not working and key we can use one and key string is cisco okay so once we create the key it will not take effect because we haven't applied on an interface so we need to go inside the interface and uh, apply it there so ib authentication mode eigrb 100 autonom that's the autonomous system md5 and do it again ib authentication will choose keychain and eigrb 100 and we will put the keychain we created not working and the neighborhood will be forming now yeah new adjacency you see so if i go to r3 now if i go to r3 now and apply the same key keychain on this side all this will fall down i mean it will not know anything on any routes that's basically i mean the relationship will fail because it need authentication so you can go any router and use the same configuration and it will work all right uh, so that is all the verification we need thanks for watching eigrb load balancing if you look at our topology is between hq and r3 we have redundancy going on so what we need to do is we need to load balance it and if you look at um on our topology all i, I have not done anything uh, special to it um i've just add another link and inject this route to eigrb as we are using normal eigrb and i'm just continuing the configuration from our last lab so uh, 
let's go and if you look at this link is 128 kilobit i mean i'm just using it as a example and this this link is 256 so uh, what eigrb will do is uh, by default it will do equal load balancing which is not really in reality this is not equal to this because this is uh, two times more than this so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, variance so variance is a multiplier basically so uh, and the default variance is one so it will not it will only multiply once we'll, we'll check the eigrb um, routing table and uh, eigrb topology as well to verify what, what i'm talking about now but what it will do is variance it will send one here and two here once we configure variance so one here two here two here yeah one here two here so on yeah so let's go and uh do some verification first because eigrb is already configured so show ib eigrb topology so if you look at our topology uh both links are uh, are equal because we have not configured our bandwidth but uh, if you look at it this is uh, that is the feasible distance and this is advertised distance so let's go and uh, configure the bandwidth first T and interface serial 2 slash 3 and let's make it the command we use is bandwidth bandwidth and let's exit out of here and use go to under uh, slash 4 and configure bandwidth once we finish that if you go out of it and go to the same yeah you can see it serial 3 is uh, it's got less feasible distance than serial 4 so uh, and the advertised distance is the same okay uh, I'm just checking it from the point of view of how HQ sees R4 loopback. That's the point of view that I'm checking in here, yeah? Because it's going through R3. Uh, so how R4 will receive this uh, network, okay? So uh, if I go back to it, and all I need to do to configure variance is I need to go inside uh, e uh, router EIGRB, EIGRB 100 and variance and the default is one as I say so it's between one up to 128 uh, metric variance multiplier so we need to use two and once you press enter it will take effect and if we go up topology you will see yeah uh, you will see any difference but in reality is it will uh, divide the load between them and it will not send uh, two here and two here it will send one here two here one here two here that's how uh, load balancing work but uh, that is all the verification we need and uh, thanks for eigrb ib version 6 configuration or eigrb version 3 on this topology uh, what we will configure is eigrb version 3 on this side of the topology between R3 and R4 and EIGRB version uh, 2 is normal EIGRB which we know as on this side of the topology there's EIGRB configured but that's version 2 on this side of the topology this side will configure EIGRB version 3 and version 3 uses IB version 6 so uh, what I have done is on this side of the topology, I've already configured IB version 6 address on this side, on this interface and this interface. So the IB configuration is already there. All we need to do is uh, go inside and enable EIGRB version 3. But if you remember EIGRB as a protocol, the configuration of it is very simple in IB version 4. But IB version 6 is even simpler than version 4. So let's go and uh, configure it let's go to r3 because what we need to configure is between r3 and r4 so we'll go to um, we'll go to the configuration and first of all we need to conf we need to enable ib version 6 
uh, so that's how you enable it. You uh, add refreshes in Unicast routing, and what we need to configure in here is um, we need to start with IPv6. Everything that you're doing in IPv6, you start with IPv6, and we will. Um, I kind of lost my my thought. Yeah, so um, we will configure uh, EIGRB um, 100, and that's it. We exit from there and uh, what we need to do is we need to go inside the interface I think it was that interface let me just check it um, yeah okay uh, IBV6 EIGRB and we need to choose the autonomous system we already put there which was 100 and 100 okay and that's it let's go to R4 and do the same and we need to enable IBV6 first uh, once we enable it, we need to, um, whoops, IBV6 router, uh, EIGRB 100, and exit from there. You're not doing anything. You can you can do the router ID in here, but can but we can exit from here and interface Ethernet 1 slash 0 and enable IBV6 on the interface, and it will be it will form a new relationship now. Yeah, you can see that up with uh, link local address because that's how IBV6 uh, form the neighbor relationship always it does not use the interface that you give if you look at it here that you give the, um, the IB address that you give the interface if you look at this interface the IB address it has that we configured is that but the, the, the automatic IB address is let me go back yeah it's this yeah with the e, e, uh, F, yeah F triple F E that's basically your MAC address and they split it in the middle and both uh, triple F E so uh, there's a theory behind it obviously uh, but anyway let's go and uh, do some verification so I be the route and we will not see anything because we don't have um, we don't have uh, we only have the directly connected routes here and here um, so this route will not be interested because it will not appear on the database so what I will do is I'll go to R3 I think I configure some loop bags on R3 so let me go back and confirm that uh, show try bb6 interface brief so if you look oh yeah uh, I did configure a couple of IBA a uh, couple of interfaces on a couple of loop bags actually on uh, R3. So what I will do is I'll go inside and enable uh, the EIGRB here, version 3, and we will see interesting uh, route, routes here. So let me go to R3 and um, go inside interface loopback uh, 0 and IBV6 EIGRB 100. And let me just use the arrow up and enable all of them. It's the easiest way to do that instead of writing it a couple of times you can just go up and up again and that's it so let's go to r4 and you remember we didn't have any uh dynamic routes in here if you go back up you see all these dynamic routes we we know them now so all these all six of them so that's that's good that's good so um show ibv6 Protocol, so you can see that the protocol is enabled, uh, and the AS we use in EIGRB, but the autonomous system is 100. You can see it here, and yeah, that's and the interface that is participating this uh, neighborship uh, is that. So that is good. IBV6 EIGRB uh, neighbors, you will know the neighbor in their link local address, and uh, what interface is connected to so if you look at the diagram it's that interface in that interface so that's good um what else can we check topology okay so we know all the routes in their successes and that's good so that's all the verification we need thanks for eigrb name it configuration on this lab we'll configure eigrb but we will not use uh, the normal autonomous system 
as we used to, like autonomous system 10, autonomous system 100, we will use uh, name it. Uh, so let's go and uh, configure it. Okay, let's go to, uh, first of all, if we go back to the topology, um, we will uh, do it on this side of that topology. Yeah, so we we'll use uh, name it uh, mode on that side. So let's go and uh, configure it. Let's go to the console and uh, ping. Just let's see if there's a normal connectivity. 17.2.2. .2. Yeah, so that's fine. Uh, what we're going to do is this. Let's go to global config and uh, router. EIGRB, if you use the explanation mark, it will give you two options. Um, either use the autonomous system number or you can use name award yeah so uh if you wanna if you wanna do it this way you must you need to make sure that you have a uh, the latest version of the operating system of the ios uh i'm, I'm using 15.2 so anything after 15 uh version 15 it should work with it so let's go to global config router eigrb and i will name it abh once i'm inside here i will not use uh, the traditional EIGRB, which is what we used to use name, so we will not do it. Uh, what I'm going to use is address family, and I will uh, I will use a sensitive help, and I will <coughs> ask. Uh, it will ask me um, which version of the IB I will use. So I will say IB4, and I will choose. Uh, I can't even check for helping i can use unicast or autonomous system straight so let's use unicast and autonomous system then normally autonomous system 10 yeah okay once i'm inside here then i can use the now work statement while while i'm here the only difference between um let me let me just finish this um is 2.0 the only difference between uh the name it eigrb and the normal eigrb is Name it EIGRB, you can do all the configuration in in here, like when you are inside here. Example, you can go inside the interface and do the configuration that you meant to do on the interface. If you remember the old version of the uh, of the EIGRB, if you wanna uh, do some sort of uh, authentication, let's say you need to go inside the interface, or if you wanna uh, auto summarize, uh, if you wanna summarize it, uh, you need to go inside the interface and write down IB summary, so on. But you can do everything in here. So let's just say, or you can even do the passive interface here and uh, use enter. And uh, we need to say no passive interface. But for now, we don't need that. And uh, what we're going to do is we already put the network um, statement. So we need to go to R2 and uh, config router EIGRB and ABH. Yeah same name and uh, address family ib4 unicast ib v4 unicast and you can do the same way in ib version 6 if you look at it here um if you look at it here you can do the same stages in ib version uh, 6 so uh, oops uh unicast autonomous system 10 Okay, and uh, network statement. If you look at it here uh, on our topology, what we will do is we will make our routing table interesting. We will inject all these routes into EIGRB. So when we go here, we will see routing table which is full because in here we already have the autonomous uh, autonomous system 100 which knows all these routes. So if we configure EIGRB between these uh, two endpoints, two connections, it will only see. You will not see any routes because it only it already knows this route because it's connected to it and this side is connected to it so what we need is we need r2 to advertise all these routes so when we go to hq we can see all these routes yeah so let's go and do it uh let's go to here um network and i will start with 172 17.2.0 we should form a neighbor relationship now everything works yeah so that's good new adjacency so let's just inject the routes uh 1.1.0 2.0 i'm just using upper key 3.0 it's up to four i think 
4 to 0 so let's see and yep that's at 4 okay so we'll go to HQ and uh, show ID uh, route EIGRB and I will just choose the autonomous system I want to see the routes so you can see the autonomous system I'm using if you look at the diagram is 10 yeah so the autonomous system between these two points are 10 and whatever in here is uh, 100 so that's why I just use different numbers okay so if you look at it here you can see we have a dynamic route we inject it okay so if you just look at it here 100 you will not see these routes because they're not injected in in here yeah so that's that's how we want to see it um, if you go to r2 you will not see any interesting route uh, let's say id route and you will only see these other routes which we're not supposed to see but let's see yeah will be uh, 100 no not 100 is not there Oh, um, I was testing earlier and I injected these routes. I, sh I should say no, so they will not come here. But they will not appear here. But since they appear here, we will just leave them. Uh, if you wanna, if you don't want them to appear here, you can go here and uh, just say no, not work, and you just need to put the IP address, and they will disappear. So, but anyway, uh, for this lab, that's all we need to see. Thanks for watching. Configuring basic OSPF on this topology, there is no configuration. OSPF has not been configured yet. Only um, only IP addresses has been configured on the interfaces. On these interfaces, we will just verify them. And uh, on this topology, we actually have is actually multi-area OSPF. It's not only one OSPF, one area OSPF. It's multi-area OSPF. And uh, if you look at it. Uh, on this topology we'll be using for all the OSPF network uh, all the OSPF labs so we will do summarization at one point we'll do a visual link in here at one point and uh, on the coming um, videos and we will do OSPF version 3 as well you can see the IPv6 already been configured so let's go and configure the basic OSPF and, uh, and it is multi-area because we have area 3, 2, 1 and 0 so we have 4 areas let's go and uh, configure them starting uh, with R1 if we go to global config and start with uh, router OSPF and uh, we can use the process ID and uh, the process ID is locally uh, significant so let's just use 1 and um, let's start uh, putting the network statement so the network statement will start with since we are in number router one router one and router one is connected to area zero we'll start configuring in the ip address is this for router one so let's go and uh, do that okay 44.1.1.0 and is slash 24 so zero zero uh zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five that's wild card mask that's the inverse of the subnet mask so area zero okay and uh, r1 is connected to a couple of uh other areas as well if you look at it here it's connected to area one and area two r1 is called abr yeah so and this is abr as well so we have two abrs so let's go and um, finish configuring R1 so um, let's go back to the console and put another network statement network uh, 13.1.1.0 0.0.0.2.5 .1 .1 .0 .0 um, that first that's slash 30 so we're just using wildcard uh, which is equivalent to slash 30 so it's mine is what it is 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 basically two five five uh, take away two five two, which is um, three. Yeah, so that's why that's how we get the three. Okay, um, area uh, one. Okay, so let's put another network statement. Uh, so 
Now, if you look at the topology, we, we configure this area and we configure this area on R1 and we need to configure this area on R1. Then we'll go to R4 and R5 and configure them. So area area zero will be um, will be established and we'll go to area two and area one to configure them. Yeah. So let's, let's go back to the console. Okay, so uh, network. 12.1.1.0.0.0.0.3 area 2 okay we're done with uh we're done with r1 show ib interface proof i should start with that one actually so we can see all of the networks um so we we have done our work the, it, the interface is up everything's up so uh show ib route we shouldn't see anything but i'm just checking it okay so good uh, let's go to R4 and configure it, yeah? So where is R4? R4 is here. Uh, show IB interface brief. Let's start with that. And we have one Ethernet interface which is up. So it's good. Let's go to global config. Router OS, uh, router OSVF or process ID 1. It's locally significant. So that's the process ID, I mean. 0 to 0 to 0 to 255 area 0 now when I press enter uh, new adjacency should be formed and area should be uh, new uh, this two routers should form a neighbor relationship yeah so what I will do is just see the process how does it form I will actually go to R1 before I press enter and enable uh, debug yeah so uh, what I want is debug debug IB OSPF adjacency enter. Okay, so when I press enter, it will we will see the messages on R1. You see the messages is you see is started here. It's already selected the DR which is R1. And if you look if you go up, let's just let me just you all. Okay, so if we look at it, this is it started with a two-way com uh, two-way communication. That is, if you remember, OSPF. Uh, I mean, that is the process it goes through, and yeah, that's so. So basically, you can watch it happen. The adjacency. How did it happen? That's all I want you to see. It. Okay, let's go back and see uh, the uh, loaded stand. It's full, so it's good. If we go out and show. IP route, we should see those two areas because we injected them into a the ABR because this is ABR which is connected to area 2 and area. So uh, let's go to R5 and configure it so uh, we'll be done with uh, area 0. Let's go to R5. Where's R5? Okay. Config T router OSPF process ID 1 and network which is um area okay network 451.1.0.0.0.0.255 area zero should form a new relationship which is anytime why is it not? yeah okay <laughs> it's kind of a bit slow but it form two neighbor relationships which is um r4 and r1 i'm just leaving the router id but what i can do is i can actually uh, this is actually um, the best practice, so let's just give them these ideas and clear the process ID. The way you do it is you just go out and you just say clear IB OSPF process and you will reform the neighbor relationship and we will see, if you go to R1, you will see 555 that is the neighbor. So. Let's go to R1 as well and do that. Um, actually, that's the best practice to have a, to configure the router ID first before you do the network statement. Uh, so let's just configure router ID 1.1.1 1 .1 and I'll just actually copy this and just to make it clear, to make it quicker, I'll just say, do that and go to R4 uh, router OSPF. Uh, one network um yeah no 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 network no network uh we need our id 4.4.4.4 .4 .4 .4. 
so do okay it will clear the process and all our router ids are good now uh, show id ospf neighbors so you will see the neighbors you see you will have that and r1 is still in still in the process of show ib route okay uh why is it not router ospf process id one enter show run i'm just going back out of it so i can see ospf why is it not forming neighbor relationship oh no yeah router router 4 is one of those slow routers so <laughs> okay so let's go to r4 and we can see the neighbors on r1 which is two neighbors we we have uh 444 four, four, and that's the neighbor id so it looks cleaner basically um that's all what it is show ib uh if we say show ib ospf ospf neighbors we will see from the point of view of r5 we have r11 and um router one and router four okay so uh we are basically done on this side so let's just configure this router and this router so uh, area two and area one will be um configured and we will not configure this area because this is a special area <laughs> not really special but it's, you will not be able to make any connection to here we need to create some form of um visual link which is kind of trickery and it's not the best practice but still you can um is a is a way you can walk around this uh shortcoming so because all the areas on ospf must be connected to area zero which is here and this area is not connected to this area so there's no point for us to configure it now because it is on the topology for a reason because i will be creating a, a video or a lab for for this specific area yeah so what i will do is i will create this area and this area and that will be the end of this lab so let's go to r2 and uh, configure it r2 what is r2 okay so config t router ospf and this process id is locally significant so no oops why is it not yeah because my cap lock was off zero zero to zero to zero dot three area two should form a new relationship yeah that's good so that's all we need to see in r2 and let's go to r3 and do the same configuration router os router ospf process id one network one three dot one dot one dot zero zero to zero to zero dot three area uh one so we should form a neighbor relationship with r one so that's good um actually i keep forgetting this i don't know why am i forgetting it but let's just do the router ids uh router id three dot three dot three dot three clear our spf process the way you do whatever you are on on the router uh what you can do is you can do uh this command do and write the other command you want and it will take effect so that's done and r2 is do uh there's no point because i do not router id 2.2.2.2 and do that command again Okay, so uh, we're kind of done here. Let's go to R3, show IB route. And we can see the inter areas on R3, which is here. If you look at it here, this is a different area. So this area is going through the ABR and yeah, so that's the inter area. And if we go to R2, you will see R3 or area one as an inter area on the other way, yeah? So let's just confirm that. Let's let me deselect that and okay. Uh, let's go to R two and just confirm the show IB route, and you will see area forty five is inter area and area uh, one, which is one three, is inter area. So that's good. 
AI, what is it stand for? If you look, if you see the AI, if you look at here, there's, I mean, you can easily see it here. It's OSPF intra area. So all the codes are here. C is got a meaning which is connected. L is a local, so you can just check it that way. Yeah. Okay. So um, so far so good. Let's go back to R4 and just see from the point of view of R4 and how does it see. So it sees both areas which is really good that's what we, what we need to see so can we think from um, r2 to r4 R let's go and check it out let's go to r2 and think uh, 4.1 uh, 40 45.1.1.4 yeah so that's success that's all we need to see uh, that's about it thanks for watching configuring OSPF version 3 on this topology all the IBv6 addresses has been configured on all the interfaces and in all the areas so what we need to do is we need to enable OSPF version uh, 3 OSPF version 2 was simple to configure but version 3 is even com it's even um, easier to con it's even simpler uh, in a way uh, because there's no network statement so uh, let's go and uh, configure it and see how uh, to do the configuration. Let's start with R1 and go to global config and start with IBV6 unicast. And once we enable that, we need to start with IBV6. Everything you're doing in I, everything that you are doing in IBV6, you start with IBV6. So router OSPF 100 and you only need to configure router ID. So since it's R1, we'll just use 1.1.1. And IBV6 still uses uh, the 32-bit uh, long address as a router ID. So that's the only time that you will see. And that's it from there. That's all you need from here. And if you look at it here, on we start with R1. R1 is our ABR. This is the ABR because it connects all the areas together. All three areas and this is ABR as well because it connects area 2 to area 3 okay so uh, what we will do is we will go inside the interface and configure uh, OSPF and inside this interface configure inside this interface and configure yeah so let's go and do that let's start with this interface Ethernet interface and uh, interface Ethernet 1 slash 0 and we will start with IBV6 OSPF and we'll tell the process ID and we'll tell the area as well because Ethernet this interface is is in area 0 and this interface is in area 1 that interface is in area 2 that's why it's ABR so let's go and continue the configuration uh, exit from here interface serial serial let's start with 2 slash 1 and IDD6 OSPF process ID area uh, area one and exit from there uh, let's go to the other interface and I'm just using the arrow to go up and down so it's much more easier to configure okay so we are done with the configuration let's just uh, do this uh, section OSPF and you can see the exact commands that you need to configure that's our old OS but this, this is confusing um, yeah this is what we need this is a normal OSPF which has been configured so that's the commands you need um, to configure it okay so let's just exit from there because this is a bit confusing okay uh, let's go to R4 and configure it router IBV6 uh, unicast IBV IBV6 router OSPF process ID 100 uh, that number that 100 is locally significant so it does not matter okay router ID um, 4.4.4.4 exit and let's go inside the interface Ethernet uh, 1 slash 0 and IBV6 IBV6 OSPF process ID 100 area once I press enter it will form a new relationship 
of uh, with R1. So let's just wait for it for a second here. So you can see that it formed with uh, the tower ID, which is dot one dot one. So that's good, and the process is 100. So far, so good. Let's go to R4, R5, and do the same. Uh, IBB6, unit uh, routing, and IBB6 router OSPF, process ID 100, um, router ID, and we will just use the, because this is R5, so it's easier to remember 5.5.5.5, yeah? So 1 slash 0, and IBV6, IBV6, OSPF 100, area 0. So we are done with area 0. Yep, that's good. This is two of them. So let's go to R2 and configure it. We basically done with this. So, and uh, R1 is already configured on this side, on this side. So what I will do is I'll go to R2 and configure this side and R3 and configure this side. So we will have uh, full connectivity up to here. Yeah, we'll have full connectivity. That's good. So let's do that. Okay, let's go and um, let's go back to our console and uh, do R2. router. No, router. start with IBV6, Unicast, IBV6, uh, router, OSPF 100, router ID 2.2.2.2, .2 and exit from there. There's nothing else to do. Serial um, zero, uh, slash 0, I think, yeah, 2 slash 0, and we will just do the same process. If you see it once, there's no... Um, it's the same thing, you just repeat the same process, but you need to change the area. So uh, R2 is in area 2, so yeah. if you look at the diagram, it will form a neighbor relationship, obviously, but if you look at the diagram, it's in area 2. R2 is in area 2. So uh, if we go to R3 and uh, finish the configuration, because we already uh, finished the configuration on R1 uh, side, so we need to configure R3, we already done this side as well so the last bit is r3 so let's go and uh, do that okay so we and we are in r3 okay so let's go and um, go to global config ibv6 unicast ibv6 um, router ospf process id 100 and router id well we need to configure router id in here okay and exit from there okay if you look at the diagram we have this interface so we need to apply it on this interface here yeah? okay let's go to the console and go inside the interface serial okay uh, 2 slash 1 ipv6 uh, ospf process id 100 area area 1 yeah so it should form a neighbor relationship with r1 yeah that's good so far so good so let's do some verification okay the way we do verification is show ibv6 uh, ospf neighbor yeah so we have a neighbor relationship with r1 which is uh, true because that's the neighbor relationship we have with r1 so let's go and uh, do r4 because r4 or r5 they are much more interesting because they have a neighbor and they have a neighbor so Let's go to R4 and uh, do some verification. Okay, let's exit from there. Show IBV6 OSPF neighbor. And R4 have uh, two neighbors, which is R1 and R5. Okay, so show IBV6 route. So let's see the routes, inter-area uh, inter routes. So yeah, not inter-area routes. <laughs> Inter route, so um, yeah, inter area that that is the that's what you see when you when you configure normal OSPF, but this is IBV uh, OSPF version three. So yeah, it sees them these two addresses, these two separate areas as uh, what is it? Yeah, inter inter area. So okay, uh, let's go to R five and do the same uh, verification show IBV6 um, SPF neighbor 
Actually, that was be a database. Let's see the database. Okay. Yeah. So everything is in the database. If you look at it, there's our there's all the routers that is in our um, our uh, area. So show IPv6 route. Okay. So that's all the verification we need. Thanks for watching. OSPF route summarization. On our topology, we have a couple of routes to summarize. On we have a couple of routes in R2, which is in area two, in R3, which is in area one. So uh, what we're going to do is we will summarize all these routes and we'll summarize all these routes. And the only way, the only place we can summarize is here. That is the ABR. Okay. So uh, now. What we're going to do is we will check how R4 sees this network and this network. So we will know how R4 used to see these networks once we summarize it. Okay, uh, let's go to R4 and show IP route. And R4 sees all of them as individual links, all of them. You see, that's from R3 uh, and this is from R2. So that's area two and this is area one okay what we need is we need to summarize all this into one route and all this into one route so we will have a much more cleaner routing table yeah so let's go to our let's go to the topology first and the only place you can uh, summarize in ospf is the abr which is this one abr means is the router that have a couple of uh, interfaces on different um different areas so R1 have interface in area 0, area 2, and area 1. So that's ABR. This is ABR as well because it's got different, in, uh, it's, got, it's got one interface on area 3 and one interface on area 2. So uh, let's go to R1 and configure the summarization here. So we'll do the summarization here on both um, this and this link, uh, this addresses. So let's go to R1 one and go to global config router o ospf um, process id one and we'll start with area so we need to summarize area one first and what we're going to do let me go back to the topology one time and on this side we'll summarize it 22 slash 22 and here we'll summarize it as a slash 21 yeah so let's let's go and do it we all know what um what does it stand for slash 21 or 22 so okay uh yeah let's put the network and 32 slash 2 255 255.248.0 enter whoops okay so i forget important command that's good actually i forget the range command yeah so uh area area one yeah so you need to put that that command range yeah so range and put the address again 72 16.32.0 and sub the mask 255 255.248.0 enter so that area has been summarized if you look at r4 r4 used to see all this and now if you go up and show IP route, you should see only one route. So if you look at it here, it only sees one route, which is that, yeah, uh, slash 20, see, it only sees one route. So if you look, if you go up a little bit, it sees all these routes, that's before, and this is after, okay? So that's good, means it's effective. Let's go back up and summarize area two as well, yeah? Uh, don't forget the range command because it will not anyway even if you for, if you forget it will give you an error so uh, but don't forget it. okay um, let's start with uh, 20 what was it uh, let me go back yeah that's 20 yeah so uh, 20.0 255 255 this was slash 22 we say 252.0 yeah slash 22 that we'll use on this side so that's uh that's full uh seven max two five five two five five two five five so what we will do is we will use slash twenty two so um it will make it two five two five two 
dot zero as we just put put it here. Uh, if you look at it here, here. It's good. So um, let's go to R five now. Uh, sorry, R four, and look at it again. Remember, this is before, and the routing table is much more cleaner now. We only have two routes to get into the to all this network and all this network. We only have one route for here and one route for here and all that. Okay, so if you if you if you look at it, if you look at R one, R one is not summarizing anything. R1. R1 sees everything. R1 sees the full uh, routing table here and the full routing table here. It's not summarizing. Let me let me show you what I mean. Let me go to uh, R1 and show ID route. R1 sees everything, you see? So it sees as all that it sees. But if you go to R5, let's say, show ID route, they only sees they only see two uh, summarized routes. So our summarization is effective. That's all about it. Thanks for watching. OSPF virtual links. On our lab, uh, I've been saying um, on the other labs that I will configure this side as a virtual link. So uh, on this side, I have not configured uh, the OSPF yet. So what I will do is I will configure OSPF on these two routes. And once I finish, uh, we will examine the routing table of R6 and see uh, how it looks before we configure the virtual link, okay? So it's just normal configuration. We'll just go to R2 uh, first and, and add the, actually let's start with R6 and yeah, uh, router OSPF version uh, OSPF, not version one, obviously, but process ID one uh, network, and the network that I need to configure is twenty six dot one dot one dot zero zero dot zero dot zero dot three is slash thirty. That's why I'm saying three. Okay, area three. Okay, once I finish this side, I need to go to R two because if you look at if you look at the topology, uh, R two is connected to R six. Yeah. So we need to configure R2 for that. So let's go to R2, config T and router OSPF, process ID 1, and network 26.1.1.0.0.0.0.3, area, zero, area um, not 0, area 3. OK, so now. Uh, it will form a neighbor relationship. It, it might take a couple of seconds. R2 is, is slow today for some reason. Show IB OSPF neighbor. So, yeah, it already formed. Yeah, it's, it's still negotiating. So, yeah. Okay, so show IB route. You will see the other areas. Well, let's go to R2 to R6 and show ID route we will not see anything so um, but R2 we just give it a second it will come up yeah so you see R2 did come up so uh, let's let's configure the routing ID and that come up it, they just took their time that's GNS3 for you so OSPF I forget the router ID so I'll just configure the router ID for 6.6.6 .6 and I will clear it so the way you clear it is you just write that and uh, click yes and it will reset the neighbor relationship and now uh, if we go to R2 we have 6.6 .6 as a neighbor so Let's go to 6 and 6. Now we see show IB OSPF neighbor. We can see that it has a neighbor, but if we say show IB route, there's nothing on the routing table. Okay, so in a way, if you look at the topology, we are breaking the rules. So um, it says on as a rule, all uh, the areas must be connected to area zero. So in a way, this area, when we created this area, we are bending the rules. So what we will do is, it's like creating a tunnel between them like that. And 
every all the updates will be coming to here so let's let's create the visual link yeah and we'll see you'll see what i'm talking about what i will do is i will i will not create the visual link here i will create it between these two because r1 is connected to area zero so r2 and r1 need to be connected and that update will come that way so the update will go that way yeah so uh, let's go to r2 and configure the visual link on that side so if we go to r2 and go to global config router ospf process id one and start with the area and the area we are in the transit area is our area two so area two virtual link and we need to tell the router id that's why router id is very important so it's good to set it one time and not change it yeah so in case you have a visual link because if you change the area the uh, router id the that visual link we create it will not be uh i mean it will fail basically the connection will not be there anymore because we changed the router id so what i will do is i will i already configured router id for it so i'll say dot uh, one dot one dot one that was r1 and once we do that if we go to r uh, R1 it sees one end of the connection so we need to create on this on this side exit from here we basically router OSPF that's where we need to be and we need to create the visual link R2 visual link and we need to tell the router ID of R2.2.2.2 once I do that it will form a neighbor relationship you see it did form a neighbor relationship so if we go to if we now go to R6, yeah, R6, and remember, we did not have any routing table, and we did not know anything about uh, area zero or area one that they exist, but now, if you go to R6 and do the same command, remember, this was before, before, yeah? If we go up, now it's populated, our routing table, we know about 13 hour, we know about 26, obviously, we are connected to it, but, and we know about the summary routes. You see these summary routes? This this is not summarized for some reason because it's coming from here. Yeah? It's coming from here. It's not coming from the ABR. Remember the last lab we did the summarization. So we summarize everything in here. So all these routes, this route and this route, we summarize them in here. So if I go here and summarize all this route in here router 6 will have a cleaner uh, routing table yeah so what we can do is we can go to r2 and summarize just it's good to 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 exercise so uh, area 2 and a one nine two six eight dot twenty dot zero and two five five two five five two five two that is we used slash 20 um okay I'm, I'm i'm forgetting a command so yeah don't forget range so once we do that if we go up and should have similar route you see so is we slash 22 so all these routes has been summarized into one route so it's, it's much more cleaner if you yeah um you can see it's cleaner so Let's go and uh, we are in R6. So now, now everything's coming together. We are in R6, so we need to bring R4 or R3 or R5. We should be able to connect to it. Okay, so let me just bring what is the IP address of R3. So uh, it's 13.1.1.2. Successful. Uh, bring 40. 5.1.4 that's success dot 5 that's success so we have full connectivity yeah so that is all the verification we need thanks for watching OSPF authentication OSPF version 2 supports two method uh, method of authentication uh, the first one is plain text authentication and the second one is MD5 authentication the MD5 uses uh, hash algorithm md5 hash algorithm and the plain text is uh, just send the key or the password in plain text 
So uh, on our last lab, we configure uh, the plain text. Uh, if you are interested to see the configuration, you can go and see uh, the lab before this lab. So, okay, what we're going to configure on this lab is uh, MD5. And uh, MD5, you can configure it in two ways. Either you configure uh, the authentication in uh, the area level or the interface level. So uh, what we're going to do is we will configure the area level on this side and the interface level on this side so we can see the difference between them and actually we don't see any difference but we will see different ways of doing it yeah so uh, let's go uh, r1 so r1 and r3 they will use uh, interface level okay let's go to r1 and uh, configure it oh i'm i'm in configuration level so serial uh, i'm going inside the interface and I will just go and configure it on SPF authentication and I will just use message message digest and press enter. Okay, uh, neighbor should be down by now. So message message digest key and I will use key one and I will use MD5 and the password I will use is secret. Yeah, okay enter so uh, that neighbor is already down it's not showing us anything but it is down okay uh, let's go to r3 no, r2 and uh, go to config t um, config t and let's go to the interface serial yeah so i was just waiting for that actually that's why i was just <laughs> yeah uh, i was thinking and typing that it's not gonna happen so yeah so the neighbor is down okay so let's bring it up and if you look at the other side the neighbor is down okay so uh, let's go inside the interface and uh, ID OSPF authentication message oops space message I just ID OSPF authentication dash key uh, we use key one and md5 um q1 md5 yeah so secret yeah the name what what's that oh uh my bad it's wrong absolutely wrong um yeah uh q1 md5 uh yeah secret so you need to don't mix your uh commands <laughs> yeah so the neighbor is up now you can see that that's good so far so good so uh we basically done this side of the configuration the interface level and what we're going to do is we'll configure the area level on this side yeah so let's go and start with r1 and it doesn't matter i mean this uh, we did not apply anything on this side of the interface we've been applying on the interfaces if you remember and it i mean it will not have effect on this ethernet uh and we because we configured the serial link so let's just go to r1 and uh, finish the configuration okay so the neighbor ships up that's good okay exit from here let's go to router ospf process id one and we will say area and we need area zero because we are configuring this for area zero message message digest yeah that's it and uh, let's go to the interface that's com that's part of that member of um, that area so ethernet one slash zero and ID OSPF we're actually using the same command that we used for the interface level MD and we will use different key though abh md5 yeah enter let me just copy that because i don't want to write that down every time and i don't want to make a mistake so if you look at r5 the name is down and r4 that that's r4 but if you look at r5 as well the name is down until i go and um configure them as well go the, it will be down router ospf process id one area zero and authentication message digest exit out of that and go into into the ethernet 
and um, IDOSPF um, message digest and we're using q1 md5 did i what, what am i i do yeah <laughs> so i didn't use the key so uh i didn't use q1 so let me just whoops what did i what just happened oh man okay um i'm not going to be lazy this time i'll just write it down <laughs> okay so uh Okay, uh, IBOSPF. Why is it frozen? IBOSPF uh, message digest key one and the five, and I it was ABH and the five. The neighborship Q one already exists. Yeah, um, there was a error earlier that. Yeah, uh, it was saying that this key is already exists. So what I did is I undo what I did, and because you remember, I just paste something by mistake in somewhere, somewhere here. I don't, I don't remember exactly. But if we just go up and uh, enter this key, that should be okay to form the neighbor relationship. So it's just the same key: IBOSPF message digest key dash key one MD five and the secret yeah so uh, what I will do is I'll go to R5 and configure it so you can see it without any mistakes <laughs> this time um, let's go to router OSBF and I will just configure area 0 authentication uh, message digest and exit from there and let's go to the interface Ethernet 1 slash 0 and IB or SPF message that just key 1 MD5 and you just put your ABH MD5 your key so depending which one you put it enter and the neighbor should come up if we look at it that's fully loaded yeah it's fully loaded in here as well so I was just waiting for that to come up and if you look at it here it's, yeah loaded is done uh, show IB route uh, yes yeah, still building the routing table so yeah we can see the summarization we did earlier so that's good okay so we need to um, we actually need to verify so let's just verify in the interface level IBOSPF interface Ethernet 1 slash 0 and let's just see if you look at it here it says message uh, message di digest authentication or MD MD5 authentication is enabled and the key we're using is one so uh, everything's working fine you can go to R1 and do the same and you will get the same um, result to show IP or SPF interface serial uh, not serial my bad uh, Ethernet I can write it Ethernet 1 slash 0 and you will see the same thing yeah so uh, that's all the verification we need thanks for osbf authentication osbf version 2 supports two authentication methods the first one is md5 authentication which uses md5 hashing algorithm and the second one is plain text authentication which send uh, the password or the key in clear text so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to configure osbf authentication between these two routes uh, in area two, those two routers. So uh, we'll configure in plain text uh, method first, then we will go and uh, configure uh, this area as a um, use MD5 or somewhere here. So we'll figure out, but uh, let's start with uh, the plain text first. Yeah, let's open up in router one first and um, you go to global config and uh, when you're using uh, there's actually you can do it in two ways the authentication either you can do uh, while you are doing the plain text you can do it in the area level or interface level so first of all what we're going to do is uh, we'll um, do the authentication plain text but the interface level then once we verify that's working we will uh, configure um, uh, area level 
so we'll see both ways okay uh, let's go back to R1 okay and uh, go inside the interface uh, so the interface that we need is serial uh, 2 slash 0 and start with IBOSPF authentication and enter you don't do anything that's all and uh, you need to go back uh, IBOSPF authentication dash key and you just put okay let's just use sensitive help so it says it has to be um, the password maximum eight characters not minimum so it cannot be more than eight characters so let's just use plain txt yeah that's eight characters so that is accepted the neighbor should be down um, yeah it's gonna take its time but the neighbor should be down okay uh, let's just go to r2 and uh, configure it but the neighbor should be done show ib o s p f neighbor okay so um but the neighbor would be down clear ib o s p f uh process let's just clear the process so we can yeah so that's the detached you see so that's detached it's not gonna come back up show ib out show a um so ID OSPF, uh, neighbor yeah so you can see that we do not have a neighbor because i cleared the routing table and everything come back up in here you can see so um, if you go back to the diagram and look at the neighbors that r2 have is uh, r1 and uh, r6 so we can see the neighborhood with R6, but this is down because it's waiting for the authentication. So what we're going to do is we go to the interface level and put the authentication there and this neighborhood will form again. So let's go and do it. Okay. Um, whoops. Uh, okay. So where are we? Okay. So now we can only see 666 is the only neighbor we have. Let's go. That's route 6. So. Okay, uh, let's go to interface uh, serial, serial uh, 2 slash 0 and IB OSPF authentication, IB OSPF um, authentication dash key and let's put the same key, plain TXT, yeah, enter, the neighbor should come back up in a second if you just wait for it, that's, it can't, it's low, that's GNS for you, but the neighbor should will come up and yep you can see that so now uh, you can you can see the neighbor is up so if we just go up and we can see we have a neighbor relationship with um, R1 okay so uh, yeah in it form another neighbor relationship over a visual link if you remember uh, our last uh, lab this area is not connected to area zero, and and the rule is the rule is uh, OSPF all the areas must be connected to area zero, and this area we kind of bend in the rules in a way because we created a visual link between R one and R two, so this area will look like it's attached to area zero directly. Yeah, so that's kind of um, tweaks that we did on the last lab. If you are interested, you can watch OSPF uh, Visual Link Lab and um, you will uh, see what I mean. Okay, moving on. So we did that. What we're going to do is we will uh, verify. Yeah, so let's go to R1 and uh, show IB OS. Why is it cap lock? Show IB OSPF interface serial. 2 slash 0 and what we're looking for is this simple password authentication is enabled so uh, this means that means everything that uh, these two neighbors are sending to each other or the traffic uh, I mean the key they're sending to each other is in plain text yeah so uh, what we're going to do is we will disable we will undo what we did and um, we will uh, 
and we will uh, create in the area level. Uh, if you remember, I said what we just done is the interface level. So what I will do now is the area level. So I will just undo what I just did to R1 and R2 and create um, uh, another uh, authentication between them in plain text, but the area level, yeah? So let's go and uh, do that. Let's go back to R1 and uh, go to the interface. We're just undoing whatever we did to this interface. So if I go up, I will just put no in front, front of it. Go up again, up again. Yeah. And uh, put no in front of it. Okay. So I'll do the same to R2 as well. That neighbor ship is done already. Interface, but it's not showing us. So, okay, interface uh, serial, yeah, slash zero. And let's just go up and put no and go up again and put no there. So now everything is clear. Yeah, as you can see, these messages are uh, that was uh, down and now it's up because we removed the authentication okay so what we're going to do is we need to go to uh let's just go back to r1 uh i like to go in order and go to router ospf uh, process id one and area area two and authentication yeah enter that's all i need to do from uh, the area level and i need to exit Go back to the interface and just add one more command there. IB um, IB OSPF authentication and dash key. And I'll just use the same key, plain text. Yeah. Enter. That nail sheet will go down. And let's go to router OSPF. You see that that is down. The neighbor ship is down. The neighbor ship was up earlier. Now it's down. Now it's down. You see it detached. So OSBF process ID one, and I will just put the area area number. And because if you see between router one and router two, there's area two. So that's that's the the meaning of the two. Yeah. Authentication. Let's go out of it and. Let's go back to the interface serial uh, two slash zero, and I will just put IBOSPF authentication dash key, and I will just put the plain tax txt. Yeah, that's short for tax. So uh, let's just wait for the neighbor ship to come up. You see, now it was the attack detached, and now it's fully loaded. You see, so I'm just waiting for the uh, visual link neighbor shift form so um, yeah that's that's good that's all about it thanks for watching OSPF stubby area on our topology you can see um, we've been using it for the couple for the last uh, couple of labs so uh, what we have in here is a couple of areas as well we have area 0 area 1 and area 2 and area 3 but on other labs we did not have this bit of the network so what we're going to do is first of all we need to do some housekeeping before we configure the uh, stub area so we will prove our point so what i will do is i will uh, redistribute all this um this is let's say external network we use in rip in this side yeah so i will redistribute all the um links all the networks to ospf area areas like ospf so it, it will be in uh, ospf area zero area one and um how to will see it our redistributed areas yeah so what i mean is basically all the areas will be able to see this redistributed um network yeah so uh but what we need let's say this redistributed network is a thousand or hundreds of uh, networks what we need we will configure this area as a stubby area yeah so what we need uh to verify it we need router one to just have a default route so if if you need to reach anywhere here or anywhere here 
it does not need to know all the networks yeah let's say router uh, one is a powerful router so you can handle uh, the routing table it can handle all the routing table so um let's go and configure it okay um let's do some housekeeping first what i will do is i will just configure basic rip quickly uh because rip is not enabled okay um rip um enter version 2 and i'll just enable it on this network 1.0 no summary okay so i'll just go to external network and do the same what i'm configuring is this side of the network yeah this is what i'm configuring it's nothing to do with the stub area but i just want to make a point yeah okay so uh let's go back to our configuration and um router rip and yeah uh, version 2 network and i'll just want to advertise everything yeah that's not the best practice but i just want to demonstrate uh we're just using it as a demo so no worries show ib route we should be able to see all the rip routes yeah we know it because there's r there that means rip yeah earlier if you look at it we did not have anything yeah it was all ospf and now we have rip so if we go to let's say for the just argument sake uh, let's go to r3 and see if r3 can see these routes should not be able to see it anyway but just making a point still show ip routes you see so there's no this is this, um summary routes yeah so yeah so we, we don't see anything let's go to r1 and redistribute yeah so let's go to our router ospf1 and uh, let's go to distribution trip and what do we have here metric uh metric let's say default ospf metric and we'll do the subnets yeah now if we go back to r uh, r3 and go up we should be able to see more routes you see so we see external level 2 uh, external type 2 yeah because we have external type 2 which is e2 so all these routes so if you look at it here is these routes that we are now seeing yeah okay uh if i go to let's say r um r4 or r2 let's say r2 show ib route you should be able to see all the redistributed routes you can see that so anywhere you go on this topology you will be able to see these redistributed routes because we injected them into ospf okay so let's let's do the stubby it's very easy to just create a stub area we will create the stub area then we will um, undo what we did and create totally stub area so we'll see we'll compare them we'll see the difference yeah so we'll create the stub area between r1 and r3 okay so now uh let's do some verification first so if you look at it r3 let me just go back one more time go back up and see the routing table of r3 is big we see all these external routes we see all uh, this route which is a uh, summary route uh, we see this route which is here and we see a lot of routes we see all the ospf table yeah okay uh, database yeah so um, what I'm going to do is I'll go to R1 and go inside yeah so let's go back and go back up one more time OSPF process ID 1 and I would say area 1 yeah stop that's that's the only command yeah that will yeah the neighborhood will go down and that's the only command you need but there is no there's no neighborhood here if you go back up you might still see some routes but they will expire because the neighborhood is down okay so um let's let's just wait for it for a second for r3 to catch up it's kind of yeah we're not going to wait we'll just force it ib ospf process yeah don't have time for that uh okay so now it's been 
forced, so uh, it's detached, yeah? Okay, let me go one time up, and you can see there's no routes. Okay, let's go up, because you need to configure it on both sides. There's one, if one side is stubby, let's say this side is stubby, because I configured this side stop, and this side is not stubby, I mean, there won't be any relationship between them. So you need to configure it this side and go back and configure it this side as well. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm on router three now and I will say area one, stop, enter. And the neighborhood will form again. Of course, yeah, you can see that. And remember, our uh, routing table looked like this before when we had um, neighborhood with R1, yeah? Now, let's go out and show ID route. You see, there's no uh, external links. You see, there's no external links. We only have a default route. Okay, uh, so if you go back, if you go up, this was before we had all these routes. So imagine if this um, external link is, is hundreds of, of links from OSB, uh, from another uh, um, external network, and we don't need R3 to, to see any, any of those. We only need to know how to get there. So we just point in to R1. If you need anything, if you need to uh, go to those routes, just go to um, R1. That's the default route that's pointed to R1. If you look at the diagram even, if you go back and look at the diagram, that's R1. That is the IP address of R1. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's still we see a lot of routes we see all these routes this route which is if you look at it on the diagram is this route area two we don't need we really don't need to know all these routes yeah inter area routes what we need we need to have more cleaner uh, routing table yeah so uh, what we're going to do is let's just undo what we just did because um, we need to configure totally stubby area which is Cisco proprietary so um, whoops yeah, let me just, yeah, I'm just disabling. I'm undoing what I did. So the neighbor will go down and if we go and uh, yeah, paste it there. The neighbor will come back up. Yeah, it's fully loaded. So if we go back to R3 and show IP route, all these routes will come back. There's no more default route, yeah? Okay, go back to R1 uh, and uh, Oops, uh, config T, router. Let me just clean the screen because it's too much. Uh, R1, um, router OSPF. And yeah, router OSPF, area uh, one. Okay, stop. And we need to configure it on this side. We need to add one additional command, which is no summary, yeah? when we are configuring totally stubby area. Okay, so the neighbors went down, but when we go to R, um, R3, yeah, R3, what we need is we need to configure it this way. It's same as a stubby um, area. So uh, what we go and say is area. Uh, my computer is kind of frozen, whoops. T router. OSPF press ID one area one stop that's all I need to configure so on this side of the configuration let me go back to the topology on this side of the configuration you need to add no summary but on this side you don't need to add anything you just need to uh, write the command area area number stop yeah so uh, let's yeah the neighbors form okay uh, let's go back to R3 you remember on R3 when it was total uh, stubby we had default route yeah we had default route and when we undo our configuration we had all these routes when it was just normal area okay now if I go back up show IB route I will not see any of these routes I will, I will only see default route which is much more cleaner so what it means is if you need uh if you need to get anywhere r3 just point it to send it to r3 at r1 that's it so r1 can get here 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 yeah 
So let me just prove it to you. Let me let me ring let me bing uh ring that's weird. Okay, uh let me bing R4. Okay, so let me go to R3. Bing R4 is in completely different area. Okay, and router three does not know anything about R4. It, it, I mean you cannot see this route anymore because R3 is connected to that route. Okay, so Let's go back up and ping for the four dot one dot one dot four should be able to ping can see it okay so if you go back up that's for the four dot one dot four so um that is so far so good um let's do some more verification yeah so uh let's go back to r3 and show idosvf database what how is the yeah even the database is much more cleaner we see the default trap so that's that's good uh show ib ospf uh whoops show ib route ospf and i can only see um that route which is i mean our routing table is really clean that's all the verification we need thanks for watching bgb basic configuration BGB stands for Border Gateway Protocol. It's one of the most complex routing protocols that uh, we currently use, and uh, mostly, uh, I mean, uh, who uses is um, ISPs. So, uh, or one of those big corporations that have uh, thousands of thousands of routes. Example: uh, BGB can handle a really large routing table, while um, OSPF or EIGRB cannot handle that. I mean, let's say when you got up to 4,000 routes in the routing table of OSPF or EIGRB, they they do not work great. Uh, but BGB uh, handles that. And the reason why they not, um, they not work good while when you got like 5,000 or 4,000 routes in a uh, the routing table of uh, EIGRB or OSPF is that because they are really fast. They're meant to be working internally. So, uh, and uh, BGB is the other way around. BGB is really slow uh, protocol. So what we're going to do here is uh, we have uh, external uh, BGB and internal BGB. And what we will configure is we'll configure uh, external BGB between R1 and R2. So uh, R1 and R2 have one connection over the internet. And um, yeah, so we will configure uh, this part of the network first, then we will configure this part of the network first. All the IP addresses on the network has already been configured. So we don't need to waste time of configuring IP addresses. and. Uh, the autonomous system that we are using is 65,100 and we are using 65,000 in, in there. So let's go and configure it. Let's do some verification first. We are starting with R1. Okay, uh, show IB interface brief. Okay, so we can see all our, um, all our IB addresses are up and uh, all our interfaces we see we have our loop bags up as well so that's good okay so let's start with um going to global config config t and uh, router bgb and we will start with six six five thousand one hundred uh, if you look at it here the autonomous system that we are using in here is that so we are configuring router one now then we'll go to r2 then configure it yeah so uh we'll we'll start with the statement that we'll start with is neighbor uh to form a neighbor uh, relationship uh in bgb is a manual process it's not automatic process as a uh, eigrb or ospf that you go there and you just show the network statement no it does not work that way in bgb you have to manually configure it yeah okay so uh 165 uh, 202.130. If you look at it here, let me just go to the topology. Uh, if you look at it here, that is the network. So what I say is, the neighbor in this relationship is this. Then I will mention 
uh, removed as the autonomous system yeah that's the uh, command that I'm just putting it now so okay and uh, remote remote as uh, 65,000 yeah? okay so uh, on this side of the network this side we we done we need to go to R2 and uh, do the statement yeah okay uh, let's go to R2 and go to let me just do some verification first show IB interface interface brief and yeah all the IB addresses are configured and uh, all the ports are up so let's just go to config T router uh, BGB and the the ASA the autonomous system number is 65,000 so enter and uh, we'll start with the neighbor statement and the neighbor is 209.165.2021 whoops what did i do yeah 129 i fat fingered it so yeah let's use remote us and uh, we will mention 65 uh 65100 yeah okay so uh if we go to r3 yeah uh, as i said bgb is slow so let's just wait for it it will be up yeah so unlike uh, OSBF and EIJRB, I mean, that is milliseconds or seconds, yeah? But BGB takes its time because BGB is a routing protocol of the internet. So how many routes that goes down and up every second of the internet? I mean, it's not meant to be fast, but it meant to be really a uh, handle big routing table because it's the internet, yeah? Okay, so uh, let's just do some verification on R1. Uh, show IB BGB summary. Let's just see the summary. So you can see we have a, a neighbor, which is that IB address. Actually, the version we're using is four. So everything's up. And um, let's just do one more neighbor uh, relationship. Neighbor uh, brought, um, <laughs> neighbor command. I can't write and talk at the same time. So neighbors okay so we will see we'll have a, we'll see a lot of um, a lot of information here so that's good um, let's, let's keep going let's go to the other side and uh, verify it okay let's go to the other side and let's go out of it and show IB BGB neighbor yeah, yeah so yeah, we see the same thing. And let's do the summary as well. Uh, summary. Okay. That's good. Let's say show IB route. Show IB route. We shouldn't see anything because we haven't injected any routes into BGB yet. So we just have a neighbor relationship between these two routers. Yeah. BGB established, which is external BGB. Yeah. What we will do now is uh, internal so we will uh, just configure internal uh, BGB. Internal BGB is they using the same autonomous system. That's all. So, uh, while on earlier we used two different autonomous system, which is this one and that one. That is external. Internal is within autonomous system. Yeah, that's all what it means. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll start with R2 and configure it. Then we'll go to R3. And configure it and continue that way so let's go back to global config uh, conf okay and uh, go to router BGB and autonomous system is 65,000 and we will use the network sta neighbor statement not the network statement uh, 21 uh, 23.1.1.2 and remote us 65,000 yeah Oh, um, my bad. One, because if you look at the topology, that is one. So this is our neighbor, and I was mistaking about two. So um, yeah, that's not gonna work. It will let you know. So enter, and if we go to R three and uh, go to global config config T and uh, router 
pgb 65000 and use the network a neighbor statement i don't know why i'm keep saying network but it's a neighbor statement and remote us 65000 yeah that neighbor will be up very soon give it a second anytime yeah so that's up that's good uh let's just go out and show ib show ib route uh, show ib bgb yeah uh, bgb summary yeah so we can see uh the neighbor we have we can see we can actually use the neighbor command and we'll see a lot of information but we know that we the neighbor is established because we have this up message you look at it it's up yeah so let's continue okay so if we just do show ib route we still don't see anything so what we will do is we will inject a route into uh bgb yeah so the route we will inject is uh this one that is the route we will inject so r1 will see it and r2 will see it as well so let's just go and uh, do that and confirm it yeah we'll do some verification after we confirm it router bgb and 65000 and the net i mean when you are injecting a route into bgb uh you need to use the network uh, command and you need to um once you put the ib address that you want to inject to it uh, you use mask yeah then you just put the normal submit mask that's zero and it if we go to r1 now and say show ip route oops we should be able to see it yeah you see b is stands for bgb so that is the route we injected and if we go to r2 and do the same show ip route we should see that yeah or a uh, cleaner way show ip route bgb and you will only see the route if you have more than one route that's good so we see that all the all one route we re i mean we basically not seeing all these local ib addresses which is a bit confusing uh so that's the single address we need to see okay so far so good uh what we need to do is we need to go around uh the network r1 and r2 and inject this route to this route and we need to inject this route as well into EI, uh, bgb um, database so we would should be able to see all the networks yeah so our routing tables will be much more interested interesting so let's go to r2 and go to config t router uh, router bgb and 65000 network 192.168 to to the zero mask make sure that you show the actual word mask if you use the sensitive help it will give you a couple of options but let's just use mask because we're not using route map or backdoor so 255 255 255 dot zero enter and we will go to r1 and just do that as well yeah so let's go to the autonomous system um bgb Tunnel 65100 and network and the network that we are injecting to the route is this one yeah it's 200 okay 209 okay so uh 209 209 mask make sure you put mask and normal seven mask yeah enter so uh, that route we injected, we should be able to see it. Let's just uh, use show IB BGB. So we can see that our routes are, uh, this is the route that we injected from R1 and uh, the next hub is 209. So uh, that's good. Yeah, so uh, we need to we need to change this because uh, the next hub is not this. If you, if you look at the topology, uh, when R1, R3, sorry, R3 wanted to get the loopback address on R1. The next address is not this interface. The next uh, hub is this interface, yeah? So we need to change that. And the way we change it, we go to R2 and uh, go 
inside the autonomous system and configure that so let's go and uh, do it and verify it yeah okay uh, let's go back and go to r2 if you look at it r3 remember that next hop is this ib address yeah which is the one link to r1 from r2 so uh, let's go to r let's go uh, router we are in r1 so we don't need to go anywhere uh, 65,000 okay and the statement we need to use is again it's neighbor and we need to uh, put down the IP address of R3 and say next hop self yeah enter okay so uh, if we go back to R3 and go up one more time Okay, you need to, I mean, just give it a minute or two. So it will it will take time to reflect on that, but it will be updated, yeah? Okay, just give it a second. Yeah, it will just take time. So all I've been doing, I stopped the video for a second, but all I've been doing is just going up and enter until that has changed. So the way it goes is, I mean, the next uh, hop, we say it's self, yeah? But the next hop from the perspective of R3 is E1, which is this one, yeah? So, and that is the way, uh, EIG, uh, not EIGRB, sorry, uh, that's the way of BGB should work, yeah? Okay, uh, let's just go back and uh, see what else we need to do in here. That's all about it. Thanks for watching. BGB update source and multi-hub. On our last lab, uh, what we configured was uh, basic BGB. We did not have these uh, two redundant links. We only had one link and we configured eBGB, external BGB and internal BGB, which is short for iBGB. So we created neighbor relationship using BGB and here, uh, R2 and R3 and in here as well. So, and we injected a couple of routes as well into the EI, uh, into BGB as well not EIGRB, BGB. So um, we did see some network advertisement on R1 and R3. And this is continuation. So what we need to do now is we need to form a neighbor relationship using the loopbacks, yeah? So, because the loopbacks are really reliable. Unless the router goes down, the loopback will always be up. And uh, this, this interface can be down or up, yeah? One of them can be up or down. It does not matter. The neighborship will be uh, will stay on, will stay up, yeah? So uh, what we're going to do is, and there's uh, two different uh, ways of configuring uh, BGB uh, update source and multi-hub. Uh, when you are using uh, external BGB and when you are using internal BGB, external BGB, you need to add one more command, but we're going to see it, okay? So uh, let's go and uh, configure it, okay? So let's go to R1 and uh, show IP interface brief. Let's see how uh, our uh, interface are up. Okay, so uh, we need to see, let's go back to our um, topology and see, can we ping this loopback? Let's see, uh, ping from R1, yeah, 192.168.2.2. We should not be able to because we don't have any route to an R2. So what we're going to do is we will create a static route in R1 that point is to R2, yeah? So let's go and uh, do it. Let's go back to the console. And yeah, it's not successful. So let's go to config T, IB route, IB route, and we will config. Yeah, uh, 192.168.2.2 and the subnet is all 255 and 209.165 uh, to 2.13 130 yeah okay so now if you go out uh, it should be successful what happened yeah should be successful yeah so uh let's go and go let's go to r2 and configure it the other way so uh, let's go to config t and ib route and we'll say 209 let's go to let's just check one more time this is the ib address we need yeah 
we are in R2. So what we're pointing at is we, we're telling R2 if you need to get this if you need to go to this IP address, any track that's going to this IP address, we are pointing it to this interface. Yeah. We can actually point it to this interface as well and have re uh, redundance, um, IP routes, uh, default routes, but we're not going to do it because it's the same thing. If you do it once, once you can do it twice, yeah? So uh, let's go back and say 209.165.20, uh, what is it? 201.1255.255.255. And we will say 209.165, where you where is it pointed to? 129, yeah? So now if we ping, 209.165.201.1 we should be able to so now we can create our um, BGB uh, eBGB e external BGB yeah so let's go to uh, let's go to global config and see our autonomous systems yeah so this is the autonomous system we'll use for R1 and R2 we'll use it for the autonomous system so uh, we'll start with router uh, BGB uh, 65100 and we will just start with the neighbor as normal 192.168.2.2 and we'll say remote remote as 6500 yeah okay so now uh we need to go here and configure it as well because i'm there is two more commands that need to go here but i'm just doing it in order so we uh we will see what happened so uh, router bgb 65000 and we need to use the statement which is neighbor uh, and we will use 209 that's the the loopback address that we need to form the neighborship with neighbor relationship with and 65 okay so uh, if you look at uh, the show ib bgb summary okay it's idle yeah so we need to add one more uh, two more commands yeah so what we need to say is uh, on on um, doesn't matter which one we start with okay we need to point the update source yeah so update source is loop back zero and we need to go to r1 as well and tell the update source is loop back is loop back zero so update uh, oops update source loop back zero enter okay so uh, we have that in place but if, if you look at it if you go show IP BGB summary we'll still have idle yeah so what we need is we need to because this is multiple uh, we need to uh, tell a multipoint because this is external BGB. If it was internal, that would have been it. Like that's all what we need, and neighborship will be forming by now. But what we need, uh, we need one more command, yeah, uh, for the external BGB, and uh, the command is, yeah, as neighbor, we we'll say neighbor, and we'll tell the IP address the uh, our neighbor, and we'll say eBGB multi half enter. And we'll go to the other side and we'll do the same command. Yeah. BBGB multi -hub. Yeah. And the neighborship will form. Just give a second. Uh, BGB is a bit slow. So if we just go up, it will take its time. But it will come up. You see? It did come up. Yeah. So uh, if we just go out of it and show IB BGB summary. It's not idle anymore. You see, remember, it was idle before. Now it's not idle. As long as you don't, uh, as long as you see idle, something is wrong. The neighborship is not up. So now we can see the neighbor uh, adjacency is up, and on the other side, the neighbor adjacency is up. So in here, if one of these links, if this link is dead now, the neighborship will still be up because it's nothing to do with this link. Is here? As I mean, as long as one of them is up should be fine okay so now what we're going to do is we will create a neighbor relationship using uh, the loopback addresses between r3 and r2 so uh, let's go and uh, do that yeah 
Okay, uh, let's go back to our console and go to R2. Uh, okay. Same process. Let's go to um, inside the BGB 65,000 and we will uh, tell neighbor that's the statement we'll start with neighbor 192. Uh, first of all, can we ping before we go to anywhere? Ping 192.168.3.3. We shouldn't be able to bing because there's no uh, default, there's no static route or any routing between them. So R2 should not know this uh, loopback address exists, or R3 should not know this loopback address exists. So we need to teach them and we need to educa educate them. So let's go back and do that. Let's go to uh, IB route and we'll say 192.168.3.3. 255 two, because we're using all 32 bits if you want to get there it's pointed to r1 yeah enter i mean r3 not r1 okay so if you look at the topology um r3 has got dot one yeah and that's the ip address okay let's go back to um r2 and jump to r3 and um, create start Route or default route, and we will say um, 192.168.2.2, and we use all 32 subnet mask. Okay, and uh, yeah, this my mind just went blank for a second. So we should be able to ping 192.168.2.2 should be successful. Yeah, now we can continue. Yeah, let's go back to R2 and do it in order. Uh, router uh, bgb uh, 65000 and we will start with the neighbor command neighbor 192.168.3.3 and remote us 65000 remember this is internal internal uh, bgb so ibgb so that's how um that's why we are saying remote us 65,000 because in this is 65,000, yeah? So let's go to R3 and do the same command uh, so we can see what happened. BGB and 65,000, neighbor 192.168.2.2, remote, remote us 65,000, yeah? So do show IB uh, BGB summary. The neighbor should will, will not be forming, yeah, because we are using uh, the loopback. So we need to add uh, one more command, yeah, and the command we need to add is neighbor one nine two one six eight and tell the IP address of the neighbor, and we need to tell the update source, yeah, as update source loopback zero. And we need to go to R3 and tell the same command to R3 as well. We need to say update no, IB update there's zero. Yeah, as you can see, the neighbor is already up. So, yeah, um, let's go out of it. Show IB uh, BGB uh, summary. That's good. So it was idled for. Now it's up. Let's inject some routes into uh, BGB, yeah, so we can see that uh, routing, route, router, um, the routing table being populated, yeah, uh, network, and we will just use 192.168.33.0. We are in R3, so if you look at the topology, um, that network is, is there, so we need to inject that network into the topology, and we can see it. And we will use mask 255.255.255.0. And if you go to R2 and look at the show IB route, we should be able to see that route we injected, which is B for BGB. And on R2, we'll just inject one more route, uh, router BGB. Uh, we've done this before, so you should be familiar with it by now. And we will inject with this route 22.0 mask and its default class C mask. Yeah, and if we go to R1 and let's inject one in R1 as well. So 29, 29.165.20. Uh, 
one uh let me see two two yeah two hundred dot zero mask and the mask is default color c yeah so uh on r1 let's see show ib uh route you can see we have two bgb routes that was injected into the network and that is from r3 and r2 yeah okay so if we go to r3 and do this one show ib uh, route we should be able to see r uh, routes from r2 and if we go to r2 show ib bgb no show ib route you can see routes from r1 and r3 uh, so because that route is in, router is in the middle yeah so that is that's good that's all we need to do and thanks for watching dmvbn on our last lab we configured gre tunnel and uh, now we are configuring uh, dmvbn so on our topology we have uh, router one which is the hub and uh, we have two spokes router two and three so what I will do is I will start conf the configuration with uh, router one, then uh, configure the spokes. Yep. So let's go and start with uh, router one. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the global configuration mode and start creating tunnel. And uh, we can create two billion of them, but we'll use tunnel zero for now. And uh, configure the IP address. I'm always forgetting the IP address so I always start it with um, the beginning of the configuration yeah and um, put the tunnel uh, source is 198.155.1.2 the source of the channel uh, of the tunnel not the channel obviously uh, is this uh, interface so it will be the two yeah so let's go and uh, enter and uh, tunnel uh, mode it will be gre and we will use multipoint yeah okay that's good and uh, ib nhrp network let's start with the network id that's a group id and we'll make it one and um, tunnel key we'll just make it one two three it's more more uh, security so uh, let's go in nhrp authentication and we'll use they must match they must have all the uh, spokes must be configured with uh, the authentication same authentication same key and uh, same group id okay so this is the command that ties everything all together nhrp map uh, multipoint and we can we need to make it dynamic yeah and that's it we're done with the configuration of the hub so we'll go to r2 and uh, configure it configure it and uh, use it as a template and copy everything to r3 obviously change the ip address here and uh, the other ip address of the tunnel and that's it that's all we need to do so let's go and configure r2 okay uh, let's go to r2 and uh, go to global config and uh, start creating the interface in uh, tunnel zero okay start with the ib address and the ib address is 192.168.10.2.255.255.255.0 and number router one we give dot one i believe yeah dot one router one so that's their local uh, that's the tunnel ib address so now we will just configure the tunnel source of the tunnel will be 198.155.2.2 so the the source will be here yeah the two the two so let's go and go back to the yeah enter and we'll say tunnel mode uh, gre uh, multipoint and same as um, the way we configure the the hub will configure it here as well but there will be a different commands at the end of the um, this configuration so yeah we'll use the network id one and uh, tunnel key must be the uh, tunnel key must be the same as the one we configure in the hub and uh, id nhrp 
tunnel, not tunnel, um, authentication. IB H123 and IB NHRP map uh, multicast dynamic. Okay, so that is the commands we have already seen. Now there will be a new commands IB NHRB NHS. Okay, NHS, the address that is asking you now. Let's see, whenever you see IB address, it means the IB address of the tunnel. So the the hub tunnel we configured was dot one, yeah. So that is the IB address it means. So that is the private IB address, not the public IB address. The public IB address it will ask you NBMA. So whenever you see NBM NBMA, that means the public. And whenever you see this IB address, it means the private IB address. So we will put that in there. One nine two six eight dot ten. Dot one and the other command we need is IB and HRB map and map the private IB address to the public IB address which is 198.155.1.2 and one more command which is NHRB map uh, multicast and the multicast address is 198.155 that we need to map is the two yeah that's the public IP address okay once we've done that we basically finish configuring dmvbn in one side so we need to uh, copy the template so this is our template and what i will do is i'll copy it and go to notepad and uh, paste it here all i need to change is the the, the source ip address and that IB address, which is the tunnel IB address, which is dot three. Okay, and uh, the source tunnel tunnel source, which is dot three dot two. Okay, I will just copy that, and instead of writing everything down, I can just go to global config and paste here. And just like that, our configuration. Yeah, tunnel is supposed to be up, so. Show IB interface brief. Oh, it's up, so it's good. Okay, so um, can we bing 192.168.10.2? So what I'm saying is, can we ping from here using the DMVBN, the tunnel? Can we do it that way? Can we bing like that? Okay, let's go and verify that. Before we verify it, oh, I, I did enter it, by, <laughs> but what I want to show you is, was this, IB NHRB, and it would have been, if we didn't bing it, it will be only that, inter that will be there, so this will be len dynamically, yeah, so it says dynamic, obviously, so we know that, it was uh, show IB NHRB, and you can see, it knows uh, the two which is itself and it knows the three which is it knows dynamically but this we configured statically because that was the configuration we add in there okay if we go to r1 and show ib and hrb you can see both of them are dynamic and dynamic so that's good you know what, what we're going to do is we'll configure a rip over it and uh, we need full connectivity. So we need to be able to ping uh, from BC1 to BC2 and BC2 to BC3. So we need to have full connectivity. Let's go and uh, configure rip on router 1, router 2 and router 3. Okay, uh, go to global configuration mode router uh, rip version two and no oral summary network b192.168.10.0 network 172.16.0.0 and we go to r2 and go to global configuration mode and router uh, router rip uh, version 2 and we will yeah no oral summary network 192.168.10.0 um, and uh, network 
172.16.0.0 and let's go to R3 and configure hip so we can verify them one time um, hip version 2 and no error summary network 192.168.10.0 network 172.16.0.0 okay so let's go and go to r1 and show ib show ib route and we will see that two routes was learned dynamically that's good via the tunnel so ribs working tunnels are working dmvbn is functioning all good let's go here show show ib route okay so we only see dot one and that's the only route that was advertised not dot three let's go here show ib route and we have the same issue which is, which is uh, dot one so what's going on here is it's not actually a uh, rib is blocking everything there's a block here that will say uh, split horizon yeah so um, it means don't uh, like let's say if if rib was len the route by here it will not send it back it will say oh I already know this route by this interface so I will not send it back and advertise it to router 3 let's say so that's what's going on what I will do is I will go under this interface and configure um, under the tunnel interface and disable split horizon so this is how you do this just one command and that's it we will have fully connectivity uh, interface tunnel 0 no IB split horizon that's it so what we need to if you go here earlier we only knew about one route now if we go up and yeah uh, let's let's clear let's clear uh, the routing table clear IB route everything and let's go back here and do the same command and we'll see we know dot three and we know dot one so the communication is going earlier it was going this way and that way but now it's going this way this way yeah so that is full uh, connectivity we have we only need to verify we only need to bring from here to here so we can see we have full full uh, connectivity let's go to bc1 and bing uh, 172.16.2.10 which is that ib address first bucket is dropped that's okay but the rest is success so uh, this ib that is the ib address of bc2 and the ib address of bc3 let's ping from uh, bc2 bing 172.16.3.10 yeah that's fine it will drop the first bucket but the rest is success and that is all we need to see uh, that's all the verification we need thanks for watching GRE and DMVBN on this lab is actually two parts so the first part is GRE and the second part is uh, DMVBN so let's go and start with the GRE first uh, GRE stands for generic routing encapsulation protocol is a communication protocol used to establish direct and point-to-point -point connection between two networks that means you can uh, these two um, router one and router two are connected by a public internet so a public network so what you can do is you can uh, create a tunnel between them so no one can see the data that goes between them obviously GRE uh, by default is not a secure program but you can use IBSEC on top of GRE and it will be secure but it's out of the scope of CCMB so now uh, we are going to configure G GRE uh, so let's go to the router and start with router 1 all you need to do is go to global config and uh, start with interface tunnel let's start with the tunnel and we can choose 2 billion of them but let's just use 0 for now and um, okay so let's start with this command the tunnel mode uh, GRE and we will use 
IB instead of uh, multicast. Multicast, we will, we will use multicast later on uh, for the DMVBN, but for now, we will use IB and uh, we will uh, just define the source of the of the tunnel so the source will be if we go back to our topology this is the source because we are configuring in here and this is the destination so we will say the source will be 198.155.1.2 and the destination will be the two the two yeah so let's go and configure that okay so the source is 198.155.1.2 and uh, tunnel destination will be 198.155.2.2 and we need to give IB address so we'll give a local IB address which is 192.168.10.2 um, and uh, with the similar mask dot zero and that's it we're done on, on this side let's go to router 2 and configure on that side so okay um let's start with the tunnel tunnel zero and uh tunnel mode tunnel mode gre ib okay tunnel this tunnel source will be 198.155.1 dot um which which one dot no, no, the tunnel source will be the two, the two, and uh, tunnel tunnel destination will be one nine eight dot one five five dot um dot one dot two, yeah. So it's just saying, okay. So when we configure it here, it's the other way around in here. So we will say the source will be one nine eight one five five dot two dot two, and the destination will be one nine eight one five five dot why oh my my thing is going crazy my pen is going crazy it will say 198.155.1.2 that is the destination so uh, let's go and see our uh, tunnel should be ready so let's do verification show ib interface brief and we should have a tunnel which is which don't have ib address so we should go back and assign ib address so uh tunnel zero and ID address 192.168.10.2 oops Southern mask my keyboard is going crazy today um 255.255.0 enter okay show ID interface brief we should be able to see that up up yeah okay so let's let's ping the other side uh 192.168.10 um dot 10 dot 1 yeah that's success so you can see that and if we go to router 2 and show ib interface brief and you can see that we we have um ib address in is up up so let's ping the other side ping 192.168.10.2 yeah so um it's, it's it's functioning it's good uh, what we can do is we can test it we can even use uh, routing protocol over it let's use rip yeah so let's go to router 2 because we are here it's convenient and um, router router rip version 2 and no auto okay network 192.168.10.0 and let's Go to the other side and we can even put this one in there yeah. okay so we can say 192 network uh, advertise that network as 192.2.0 and go to the other side and let's configure rip on router one router one uh, rip okay uh, version two no other summary it's just quick uh, demonstration that we can actually form a neighborship with of I mean that tunnel over the internet so that's zero now work 172.16.1.0 so let's go and check our routing table try the route we should see rip so you can see that we see rip that's good and if we go to the other side we should be able to see 
show um, show ID route. Okay, we can see rip. So uh, can we can we ping the other side? <laughs> okay, so can we ping this PC? Because this PC is dot uh, ten. Yeah, let's go and see if we can ping it. Okay, we are in file two now, so we are in here now. Yeah, we are here, so we will ping here. Okay, let's go and attempt that. Uh, ping 172.16.1.10. Is it that one? Yeah, it's that one dot ten. Yeah, success. So the rip's working. Okay, let's do one more verification. Show ID route, and you can see the the neighbor ship was formed over the tunnel. And if you go to the other side, you will see the same thing. And the neighbor ship was formed over the tunnel. Yeah. So that's all the verification we need for this lab. And thanks for watching. Basic redistribution. What we're going to do on this lab is we will redistribute OSPF to EAGRB on uh, IB version 4 or version 6. So um, on this topology, I've already configured OSPF uh, version 2, obviously, and version 3. And uh, EAGRB, I did the same here. And I configured EAGRB version 3 as well. So um, everything is already configured. But if we look at R1, I mean, R1 is part of EAGRB and OSPF. So R3 does not know anything about R2, yeah, and R4 does not know anything about these networks in R2. Uh, so what we will do is we will distribute OSPF to EIGRB, yeah, and on another lab we will distribute EIGRB on OSP uh, to OSPF. So uh, let's go and have a look at R1 uh, first and see how the uh, network looks like. Show. IB interface, uh, not show IB interface, show IB route, and we can see R1 knows about both networks. R1 knows about everything about o, uh, about uh, EIGRB and everything about OSPF. Yeah, so uh, let's go and uh, do redistribution. Uh, uh, yeah, OSPF to EIGRB. So, what we will do is we will just do it uh, this way. Yeah, first. And uh, we will do it on OS uh, IB version four and version six. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Uh, let me go there. Yeah. So uh, the key command is you need to go into the uh, protocol that you want to redistribute to. Yeah. So EIGRB and uh, EIGRB ten. Okay. And I will start with redistribute and OSPF. Okay, uh, OSPF process ID 10, and it will ask us, it will give us a um, couple of options. So let's just choose the metric, and it will show us the bandwidth. Uh, it will ask us the bandwidth. If you really want to know uh, how to, where do you get those bandwidths? Do show interface. Okay, so that is, this is the bandwidth that is talking about. This bandwidth and the delay, which is 100, uh, reliability, load, um, and what is it? MTU? What is it? MTU? Yeah, MTU. So uh, that is what you want to put. So uh, redistribute OS, OSPF 20 uh, metric, not 20, my bad, 10. Yeah. And the metric was, uh, was it? Yeah. And 255, <coughs> let me just go up one second. Yeah, the delay was 100 and 255 and one and the MT, which is 1500, yeah. And that's basically distribution. We just need to enter it. And if we go and verify it, because we we're just doing it this way, yeah. So let's go and verify that. On R2, let's go to R2, okay, and uh, show IB route, and we should see all these networks, yeah. 
actually uh, what I will do is I'll just disable this so we will see uh, before and after yeah because I did not show show you guys before so uh, let's just look at it now there's nothing there you see only uh, R2 knows about this bit of the network yeah it does not know anything on this side of the network so uh, let me go back up because I just jump one step ahead so I need to go back and do it yeah so now I have distributed uh, OSPF uh, to EIGRB and now if I go to R2 and go up and you see all these routes that EIGR, uh, that was injected into EIGRB so um, if you look at it look at this uh, that's 172.16.34 if you go up if you go back to the uh, uh, topology these are the networks that was redistributed yeah which is good that's good uh, that means it's working okay let's go and um, conf uh, let, let's let's do the OSPF version 3 uh, so what we will do is we'll redistribute all these um, networks yeah all this bit because we did the version 4 so what we need to do is we need to do version uh, IB version 6 yeah so uh, let's go and do it let's go to R1 R1 is the main one yeah, and now uh, let's go out of it. Okay, uh, so we need to go to IBv6, yeah, router, router, EIGRB uh, 20, because if you look at the autonomous system, autonomous system 20, yeah, before we were in uh, autonomous system uh, 10. So, okay, uh, let's go and enter it. Before we do that, I want to go to R2 and check show IBv6 routes. Yeah, and there's no routes that was that being redistributed. All it knows R2 is the local, and because R1 has not advertised any routes to R2, so all R2 knows is the connected routes. All this, yeah. Uh, I mean, this because this this bit is version four, so. I be version four, so this is what we need, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to where was I? Yeah, R one and redistribute, yeah. Redistribute OSPF uh, twenty. So what we will, what we are using is OSPF version three, which is the process ID of twenty. So all this will be redistributed, yeah. And we look at the different ways of redistributing as well. So. Um, okay so what we're going to do is we will use metric same same way uh was that, was that five five zero yeah and uh 100 255 one mtu 1500 okay so if you go here and uh go to r2 and use the same command go up we will see some redistributed routes yeah if you go down more you'll see some redistributed routes. EX, if you go up, you, I mean, you'll see that's external uh, EIGRB um, network, which means that they have been redistributed, yeah? So uh, what I wanna do is I wanna go back and uh, use the same command, but I will use included connectors, because if you look at it here, if you look at it here, um, wait, uh, let me go back, where was I, yeah? If you look at it here it does not include the connected network so it starts from 34 and uh, if I go up and select this yeah and 34 so uh, if we go to the diagram we cannot see this network so what we need is we need to add one more command yeah go back uh, to the config uh, here and let's go back and just add this command include it connected yeah so before if you look at it before we did not had this network yeah now we should have when we go back and press enter let's go to r1 enter if we go to r2 was it r2 we were confirmed yeah r2 and go, go back up and we should see uh, that one Wait a minute. Yeah, uh, let's go 
down more. Yeah, I can't see the. I can't see what I want. I can see this come up. Uh, if you go back, that, okay, that was not there. It's not because uh, we did add that included. But if if I go back up, maybe it's not there yet. And oh yeah, that that's what I was looking for. So that that's that's good. That's all we need to see. Um, let me. That is actually the only way we can confirm it. So um, let me go back to R two one more show IB IBB so it's PF yeah whoops that's um why am I should I be route should I be should I be V six route that's what I was looking for yeah. So all the commands are there, all the routes that we need, not commands, the routes we need, yeah. Yeah, so, so far so good. Thanks for what? Basic redistribution. On our last lab, we did uh, redistribute uh, OSPF to EIGRB, and uh, on this lab, we redistribute, uh, last lab, we did, we did it this way, the redistribution. So R2, we'll check it, can see everything in here. And now, what we will do is we will redistribute EIGRB to OSPF, yeah. So R4 and R3 can see all these networks in IB version 4 and version 6, yeah. So let's go and uh, verify it first. What we have the configuration we have, yeah. Uh, this is a continuation from where we left off last time. So uh, if we just check show IB route, you will see uh, external routes that was injected into uh, EIGRB. And uh, this is IB version 4. If you check the IB version 6, IB route, and you will see external routes as well, was injected to, if you look at it here, this route is on the topology is here. Yeah. And you will see this uh, route, uh, 1634, on, uh, on here, on R2. So um, if you look at it here, let me just, yeah, 34 there, the 034, but that's what I was pointing at. Okay, so uh, if you look at it here, I mean, R2 can see all the networks here, everything. But, uh, but R4 and R3 cannot see any network from here. So that's what we're going to uh, do. We will inject these routes to OSPF, EIGRB to OSPF. Okay, let's go to R1 first. R1 is the one that knows uh, both routes. So show ID route. If you look at it, R1 uh, knows about EIGRB and OSPF, yeah? So uh, what we're going to do is we need to go um, global config and uh, we need to go inside um, the protocol that we are injecting the routes to, we are distributing to, yeah? So uh, router OSPF and we'll start with IB version 4, uh, OSPF version 2, so yeah? And we'll just say to distribute and let's see the options we have. We have all these protocols that we can distribute to. So let's choose EIGRB and autonomous system 10. If you look at it here, we will do them both, but we will do the autonomous system 10 first, which is IB uh, version 4, and uh, we will do IB version 6, which is autonomous 20. Yeah. So let's go back to our config and let's see the options we have. We need to choose uh, subnets, yeah? Just go simple, enter. And by default, it will um, redistribute it as um, type one. So uh, let's go and configure it. Let's go to, uh, not type one, sorry, my bad, uh, type two. So let's go, you see what I mean. Let's go to R3 and configure it. Uh, okay, so uh, verify, not configure it. Show AB route. Okay, so E2, yeah? So if you look at it here, um, yeah, so E2 is external, OSP of external type 2. So what we need is type 1, yeah? So we need to uh, do some tweaks. Okay, let's, you know what, because I did not show you before, what I will do is just to make the point, I'll just undo what I did and go to R3 and run the same command. 
Yeah, so you don't see anything. All these houts. Um, you don't see all these houts in here. Yeah, so we will inject them. Yeah, let's go and do that quickly. I should have done the. I should have done it the first time, but yeah, uh, this lap. So let's go back and forth. Yeah, so you see all the links. Yeah, from here, all these IP addresses. You see them in our routing table before. We did not have them now since we redistributed we have them all but they are in e2 so we need to change that okay um let's go back to r1 and do the same command yeah and before the subnet we can use uh, metric metric type one uh if you if you look at it it will give you uh, it will ask it will give you the options to choose like which one do you want so Let's just use symmetric one and subnets. Yeah, it will do the same. If we go back to R3, four, remember E2. Now it should be E1. Yeah, so you look at it, E1. That's good. So um, that is it. Let's go to R4 and not R4. We can go actually, we can actually go to R4, show IB route and see the routes that was injected. But what we need to configure is um, IB version 6. Yeah. So we need to inject all this to here. Yeah. So um, let's go and verify it first that we don't have all these IB addresses in, let's say, R3 or R4. So um, let's just go show IB V route. So we have OSBF routes because. All these are OSPF, so where are we? We are in R3, so we see all this in here, yeah? Let me select my pen. What I mean this, yeah? We can see the routing table of R3, but it does not mean that we can see this one. It's, that's, the, that's what we need to do now, yeah? That's the whole purpose of this lab now. So uh, let's go to R1, yeah, and go inside the protocol that we need to redistribute to so uh, yeah uh, IBV this router OSPF process ID 20 and um, what we will do is redistribute EIGRB 20 autonomous system 20 and we'll just say included connected yeah that's, that's all we need. If we go to R3 or R4 in one of them, let's say R3 because R3, this is what we have. This is before. Yeah. So uh, show, let me just go up. And, yeah. So you can see E2, OSBF E2 routes that was injected into it. Yeah. So if you look at it here, this, this IP address, if you go to the diagram, is here. It's this one. Yeah. The IP address. So it means all these routes was injected here yeah and they can ping each other communicate both ways yeah okay so um, let's go yeah let me verify it on r4 as well show ibv route yeah so but they are in e2 so let's just change that let's change them to e1 um, yeah type 1 send my time let's go back to r um, R1 and change that. Uh, we we have the option here, so that's the metric, yeah, metric type. So metric type, and we need to choose. We've seen this before, so we need to choose the option and uh, include it, yeah, include it, connected. That's the command we use. It's the same command, but we only added this bit, yeah. This is the same command that we used it before for just basic ID version 6 redistribution and that is what we only add we add metric type 1 the default is 2 so we need to change it to 1 okay uh, let me just go back to R4 and verify that yeah so you can see it's E1 now oh, it's here. yeah that's that's about it that's basic distribution so thanks for watching manipulate redistribution with distribution list on this lab what we have here is two separate routing protocols yeah so we have eigrb and we have ospf and on r1 
R1 can see both of them because on this interface is part of OSPF and on this interface is part of EIGRB. But R1 have the capability of redistributing uh, OSPF routes into here and at the same time redistributing EIGRB into here, which already been configured because that is basic of redistribution. Now, what we got, what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, control the routing updates, which uh, which uh, address will be advertised. So what I mean is, uh, what I want to do is I want to advertise those three routes, but not these ones. So R2 will not know anything about um, these four routes, and on vice versa, what we will do is we will deny. Uh, this uh, update to propagate or to go to here so R3 will not be able to see all these routes it will only whoops it will only see from five six seven yeah so uh, let's go and uh, verify it first let's go to R1 and see show run I will show you what I've done uh, whoops section OSPF. I want to show you the redistribution that is already configured. So you can see that redistribution is already being configured and uh, you can check EIGRB as well. EIGRB and you will see the same configuration. So this is from actually EIGRB but I'm just searching the keyword OSPF and that is OSPF. So if you look at it here, uh, you can see EIGRB as well with the redistribution and uh, you can see the redistribution here as well. So that's good. Okay, let's go and check um, R2. If you look at the topology, R2 is here. So R2 knows about all these routes. Yeah, we're going to check it now. R2 show ID route. So all these routes has been redistributed. As you can see, all these routes are here. Look at it, all these routes, yeah, on R2. I'll go to R3 and I should see all these routes as well. R3, show IB route. And yeah, so we can see all the 192s. Okay, that's good, all these routes, yeah. So, what we need uh, first, what we need to control, the, the update that we need to control is uh, from uh, into EIGRB. So uh, from OSPF to EIGRB. So what we need is we need to allow only these three routes and the rest are blocked. Yeah, so let's go and do that. The way we do this, we start with configuring access list. So let's go to... Um, global config and standard access list. That's what we need to configure. Uh, let's just choose a number. Uh, we have um, the standard, so we need to choose a number between one to 199. So let's just choose 10, permit, and we'll permit 172.16.1.0. Uh, and we need to use a wildcard, 0, zero. And a uh, quick way of doing it is just going up the arrow and allowing all the uh, all the IP address that you want. So we'll just leave it as it is because by default, access list have uh, deny at the bottom of every access list. So deny any, any. I will not configure anything. I'll just, uh, I'll not exit from here. I need to go to router EIGRB process ID 10. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in here. Yeah, but I'm in router one. Okay, so uh, I would say distrib distribution list 10, which is this access list, yeah? And I would say out, not in, yeah? So I want to filter it outgoing, okay? Enter. So uh, what will happen is if I go to R2, because what I did is I, I control the updates that go in this way, yeah? So uh, what I should see when I go to R3, I should not see any of these. Yeah, uh, sorry, R2, I should not see any of these. I should only see those 
two routes. If we look at it, what we, uh, I think I checked it before. Yeah, I checked it before. So if you look at it, oops, here, I see all the updates here. Yeah. Now I'll just go up and do the same uh, command. I should not see all the updates. I should only see what I've allowed, which is those three. So if you look at it, this is before. So we can see 192, uh, 172, all of these up to seven, one to seven, yeah? And now if I go to the bottom, I can see only three routes. That means the access list is working. So it block uh, the updates, all the updates. So it block all these IP addresses. It only allowed this bit of the network. The rest are not, um, are not going through here and they will not go to the routing table. They, they are actually in, in, the, um, in the topology table or the database, but they're not in the routing table. Okay, that's how OSPF works. So now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to control the updates that's going this way, yeah, to OSPF. So what we will do is we will only allow um, IP addresses, we will only allow, yeah, from five to seven, yeah? The rest, they will not be, update, they will not be, um, all, I mean, R3 will not be able to see them. So as before, we'll just go to R1 because R1 is the middle. So let's go to R1. And if we look at it here, this is before picture and we will come back to that. Okay, uh, let's exit from here and create access list so make sure the access list are not the same number uh, so we just choose 20 permit 192.168 you can you can actually say um, we, let's just use other way we can deny permit oops <laughs> deny then put the IP address my bad my, my mind just went blank for a second. Um, 255, enter, go up, and change to the three, then four. Did we say up to four? Yep, I think we did up to four. And we'll say, we'll just go up one time and permit any yeah enter so let's go to router ospf process id 10 and distribute list 20 out yeah so now if we go to r3 we see all these routes before right now if i go up and do the same command i only see these uh three routes because what i did is i actually use the night statement instead of permit but i permit let me just go back to the command line uh r1 if you look at it here yeah let me just select my pen instead of using uh permit i deny so i specifically deny one to four yeah one two three four and i permit any yeah then i apply it inside the ospf process which is the way it's supposed to be and now if you go to r3 you will not be able to see see so that's good let's go back to our topology and uh, we achieve our objectives uh thanks for watching configuring redistribution with the route map on our last lab we did actually the last two labs we did uh, redistribution list and uh, prefix list and now we will use a uh, route map and uh, the way you configure route map is uh, you need to use access list and uh, so you can control or filter the the routes that will be advertised in here and the route map is actually the language of if there is any program language for Cisco routers this is it and uh, Mostly what you use for roadmap is heavily on BGB, which we will get into it uh, soon. So um, let's go and uh, start configuring. First of all, what you need to do is let's go to um, let's go to R1 and create access lists. Yeah. 
before we do that, before we, yeah, let's just do some verification. Should I be OSPF? Yeah, so we can see all the routes on the OSPF in R3, which in the topology is this router, and uh, R2 is. Uh, EIGRB route, so EIGRB uh, autonomous system 10. So if we go to R2 and verify, yeah, everything is fully um, redistributed, basic redistribution. Yeah, so now what we're trying to do is we're trying to filter the network. So I will create access list in R1, which will uh, allow the first three IP addresses. Yeah, then after that, all this will not be permitted. Okay, all right, let's go and do that. So, access list, and we will use um, standard access list um, 10 permit, and I'll just use basic network statement and the wildcard, which is the default. And I'll just go up just to make it quick, go up one more time, and three. Okay, so uh, once we have that, we'll just go and create our route map. And we need to name the route map. Uh, let's name it as ABH, and we will use a statement permit. We'll not just use deny, and uh, the number we will use it for, you can use it up to 65,585, but let's just use 10, sequence number 10. Okay, and now once we inside, we'll just say match IB address uh, 10. This 10 is nothing to do with this. Is This 10 is the access list we created. If you even use the sensitive help, it will say to you the access number. Yeah, so that's what we created. So let's just use 10 and enter. Okay, uh, that's all we need. We can even set the metric if you want. If you use the sensitive help, you can use the set. And yeah, that is, as I was saying, there's a lot of BGB, MBLS, uh, MBLS, BGB, everything is BGB if you look at it. So let's not just get into it, but let's just set the metric, yeah? example and uh, let's say the metric is um, okay 800 yeah enter okay uh, once we do that we created the route map but we did not apply it to anything so let's go into the route uh, to the routing protocol that we need to uh, control or filter the distribution so we need to go to OSPF which is the routing protocol that we need to um, do the filtering and uh, redistribute uh, and what we redistribute in the routes that we are redistributing into OSPF are EIGRB autonomous system 10 if you look at the diagram these are the routes that we are redistributing into uh, OSPF that we are trying to filter the rest yeah and this is EIGRB okay so let's go go back to the console and uh, yeah and if you use the uh, help or sensitive help it will give you um, the option route map so let's just use the route map and the route map we created was abh if you remember and uh, what other option we got yeah let's use the subnet yeah okay enter all right so if you remember before if we go to r3 and go up one time show SPF we should be able to see yeah that's good uh, we should be able to see 10 uh, yeah 10.1.1 .1 .1 up to 3 but the interesting thing is uh, if you look at it here um, is 810 it just at 800 on top of the original uh, metric which was 10 yeah the redistribution what we redistributed for uh, the basic redistribution that was in place before was uh, the metric was set to 10 and now it just at 800 if you remember we go to R1 and if we just go out of it and go back to the route map uh, 
and just change this to let's say 2000 that number will change let's go to r3 and go up on time you see 2010 you see what i mean that's good okay so uh that is uh all the verification we need on um configuring route map that was filtered on this side so let's let's just see do one more time and filter it, the traffic that's going this side yeah so let's do it okay uh let's go to r1 what is r1 yeah r1 and uh create and create uh access list so uh the access list we need to create is we'll use 20 and permit 172.16.1.0 and the wildcard mask which is 255 let's just go up one more time and change it to change it to 3 yeah once we have that it's the same process we'll just use uh, route map and um, let's use abh20 yeah permit we'll not use deny 20 so that 20 that 20 is just a sequence number yeah so uh, if we go to match IB address this 20 is the access list that number whatever you uh, number it in the access list should go here yeah so enter and now we can set the metric and let's just uh, set the metric to 300 so we will know uh, which um, metric that we configured okay let's just go to the router that we are um, redistributing so um, here gonna be 10 so let's just redistribute OSPF process ID 10 remember what we do now is the same thing but it's on this side so before we were explaining a lot and we uh, because we were doing the first time and uh, we were redistributing using route map on from EIGRB to OSPF. Now is from OSPF to EIGRB. Yeah. Okay. So let's just go and OSPF, uh, and we'll use route map. In the route map we created, remember it was ABH um, twenty, and we'll just use yeah just enter we don't, you don't need anything else yeah you don't need to use other options because we need to test it before we do anything let's go to r2 remember we, we had all these routes now let's see what happened yeah they've been yeah they've been trimmed <laughs> yeah so uh the only routes that we see now are these three routes all these other routes have been blocked by uh the route map so they are not allowed to be uh, advertise on this side yeah my pen is just going crazy today but anyway uh, that's all the verification we need one more verification that we need is show IB not show IB show show route map and we can see we have uh, this route map which we name it ABH20 and this route map which we name it ABH so we can see our sequence numbers as well and the access list that they are corresponding to. So that is the access list that applied to this route map. So route map cannot work without access list and route map you can even use it uh, in prefix list as well. But uh, for now we are just using in uh, access list. So that's all about it. Thanks for watching. Configuring redistribution with prefix list. On our last lab, uh, what we did is we configure a distribution list and we use the method of uh, access list in R1 and uh, we control the networks that was uh, redistributed to, uh, for example, uh, EIGRB to OSPF and we did this way as well, control the network. So if you remember, uh, what we did was we allow the first three networks to be advertised into EIGRB and we allowed the last three IB addresses to be advertised and the rest to be blocked. So um, that's the summary of what we did with the last lab, which was a redistribution list.
and this is a prefix list slab okay uh, what we're going to do is first let's see and um, let's see the configuration of r3 and r2 okay let's go to r3 show ib route ospf and let's see yeah we can see all the routes that was injected into ospf that was redistributed and uh if we just check the no normal show ib route you will see the same same thing okay if we go to r2 and uh, show ib route eigrb you will see all the routes that was redistributed uh into eigrb so uh, all this 172.16 if you look at it on the the ball, uh, on on the diagram you will see they are in ospf networks okay so what we need is we need to go to r1 which is r1 is the main router that you can control everything you can create all the access list all the prefix list even uh on the next slab will be a route map so we will use r1 as well so it's the main because it divides the two protocols and that's where the redistribution happen so um, let's go to r1 and create prefix list okay so you go to global config and uh, you start with ib prefix list and let's use sensitive help and you can use a sequence number or a word which is a name so let's just call it abh and now we can start with our uh, permit or deny statement let's start with uh, permit and uh, then we need to put the network that we need to deny or permit yeah slash eight is this network I'm just using as the whole class a network then I would say less than or equal to 24 this is statement it means I want to filter anything uh, I want to allow anything between uh, any subnet that is between 8 to 24 anything above 24 let's say if there is a 25 it will not be allowed if there is 26 it will not be allowed 27 it will not be allowed so if if it's let's say uh 10 it will be allowed it will if it's uh 21 it will be allowed yeah so it's anything between 8 and uh 24 there is other statement as well you can do you can say greater than or equal to 24 so you can you can say that as well so it will not accept anything uh under 24 anything which is not let's say you can do this 24 greater than 24 so if 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 you let's say go uh if you go 22 that will not be allowed if you go uh 25 it will be allowed because that is greater than and equal to so it will allow anything that is uh 24 and above up to anyway 32 so okay let's go to um let's use our original statement which was less than 24 where oh yeah uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's not our original statement so uh less than 24 yeah okay and uh, let's go to the 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 route the protocol that we need to redistribute to yeah okay uh ospf process id 10 enter and uh distribute distribution list distribute list and uh, we will use prefix and the prefix remember the one we created uh, abh this one we'll use that one yeah so abh and we need to uh, specify it in or out so we'll, we'll be saying out and the protocol that we are redistributing from the networks which is eigrb autonomous system 10 enter and that's it so uh, that's all we need to uh to configure if we go to before we go and verify it let's just use some verification in r1 show ib prefix list details and you can see that it already uh, uh have a three hit counts so it already blocked three networks 
if we go to R3, and if you remember, we have all these routes from uh, EIGRB, which was injected. If you remember, all these routes are now in R3. They were in R3 because they've been redistributed. But if you look at it now, this was before. And now if we go up and uh, we can say OSPF, yeah, that's the full protocol. You can see only three networks that we allowed are in because the rest of the network if you look at it above uh, above here there are 24 and under here up to here sorry uh, let me just delete that yeah there are 25 so our statement will not allow them to be um, advertised in here yeah so uh, that is yeah that's all the verification we need and thanks for watching Implementing policy-based routing is PBR is actually a, a way for network administrators to uh, control which uh, path the data takes. For example, on our topology, let's say we have BC1 and uh, we have BC2. Okay, so if BC1 wanted to ping, let's say uh, BC uh, route one loopback zero, the path it will take is this path. Yeah and BC2 it will take the same path. Why? Because the WAN link is faster than this serial link. Yeah. So uh, what we going to do is we need to inf influence that. So uh, we need to shape which uh, path uh, the data takes. So let's say on uh, BC1, the user who's using BC1 does not do that much of work. What they do is just go to YouTube and watch funny cat videos <laughs> or spend all their time in social media. They're not productive. So what we're going to do is we'll limit which we will control which path they take. So we don't want them to use the one link because the one link is fast and we need BC2. The user who's using BC2 who, are, who is very productive, we want that user to go uh, to go and use the one link, which is fast. And that user is just using all uh, cloud based applications which is really good productive so and user uh, BC1 the user who's using they only go to um, YouTube so uh, what we need is we need them to take this route yeah so instead of going this way they will take this route yeah so let's go and see how the data flows first okay let's go to uh bc what's bc1 this is what i've done before so let's just and see that okay so uh let's just go and check the trace route and which route the data takes so you can see it takes the second half this is the first half which is uh router two this route this interface and this it goes like that because that's the network 10.1.2 that's the path that the data takes yeah and that's another interface and it goes like that yeah okay and bc2 do the same take the same path so what we need to do is we need to control that let's check bc2 as well bc2 go up and yes it goes the same path so what we need is we need to go to r2 and create the access list first let's go to r2 uh config t and create access list the access list uh, we need to create is extended access list so IB access list extended and we need to name it so let's just name it BC1 dash ACL yeah you can name it whatever that makes sense to you so um, IB host and we need to give the IB address that we need uh, this statements to apply so um, the IP address of let me go back to the diagram the IP address of BC1 is dot 10 so that is the network is part of and that is the actual uh, number that it's got so it's 192.168.100.10 so okay let's go back to yeah so enter and exit from there okay we created the, we create the access list but we need to um, 
create a route map as well so we can uh, link them route map and we need to give a name the route map dbr dash uh, route policy yeah we can actually say permit 10 but that would be that it will just do that by default so permit 10 okay um okay uh we need to match match ib address and the ib address we need to match is from this access list okay enter and as we need to set the ib address ib next hub and the next hub we want is this so what we just say is instead of any traffic coming from bc1 instead of going that way no go this way yeah that's what we just said okay so and we will see that in uh we will verify it so okay once we do that we need to get out of it and see the roadmap show road roadmap and we can see that's what i was saying permit and sequence 10 it just does it by default so okay uh let's just see show ID policy we haven't yeah, we haven't we haven't actually uh, went under the interface and created the po uh, did the policy. So we just go inside the interface and the interface that we need to apply it is fast zero slash zero fast ethernet zero slash zero, which is this interface. Yeah. So we will apply the uh, route policy in that interface. So let's just go back and the command we will use is ib policy and route map. And we will tell the route map the name we gave the route map. Remember uh, this name? Yeah. Okay, let's go back and enter. Okay, so uh, let's verify it. We did, we finished the configuration. Yeah. Let's, before we go anywhere, let's just verify. So we can see there's a policy. Yeah. That's applied to the interface. And let's go to BC1. Remember, it was taking that route earlier. Let's go back up. And enter. What? I didn't ping. Oh yeah, trace hub. Yeah, so the path it takes. Look at it. Uh, it was taking that path before. Now it's taking this path. It means if you go here, BC one, it goes this way now. It does not go this side. But BC two will take that interface, and we will use the faster link. If you wanna, uh, I will show you. I will, I will verify it for you. Let me go to BC BC two and go up one more time and enter. You see, BC two is still taking the same path that it was taking before. I did not do. I did not uh, create any uh, access list that will deny it to go that path. So if you look at BC one, BC one will not be able to take this route anymore because the route in uh, the route. Route map, the route map will block it <laughs> yeah so uh that's that's actually that's all the verification we need on this uh, on this lab thanks for watching nat mva mva stands for nat virtual interface and uh there's two ways that you can do nat either it's dynamic or static so uh on this uh topology that we have we will configure both of them uh, we will configure here static and uh, here dynamic so uh, the way we do it is uh, actually uh, the way it works is NAT it will uh, translate all our local addresses which are all here uh, RFC 1918 to uh, global address to a routable addresses because these ones are not really routable they are routable but they they are always blocked by the ISP. So because let's say 192.168.10 or .1 or .0, um, they have been used in all over the world. Uh, every house that uh, they have a router, uh, they always have this uh, default IP address, which is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. So, okay. Uh, let's go and uh, confirm that if BC1 try to bing uh, this internet server, it, it, I mean, the request will get here, but it will be blocked because this is uh, RFC 1918 address. Yeah, 
so let's go and do that okay uh, I'm going to console r1 first and I need to create a default gateway so because if you look at here uh, this PC is connected to here and there's no routing between them so what I will do is I will create a static routing that will say default default route so it means everything that you don't know router one send it to here yeah so let's do it okay okay r1 so i'll say i ib route and i'll say any, everything 0 to 0 to 0 and 0 to 0 to 0 and i'll say send it to um, that ip address um, the internet ip address okay 165.201.2 I will enter it okay what I will do is I will go to the internet and I will say debug because I want to see what's happening IB buckets yeah so I'll go to BC1 ignore this duplex thing is uh, half duplex is a GNS I tried to correct it but it takes too much time so I don't I'm not bothered okay so what I will do is I will try to Bing uh, the server uh, let me get my pen I'll try to bring this server, yeah, and see what will happen. Okay, I already have a default uh, gateway in place, uh, default route. So, okay, let's see what happen. Um, okay, what is the IP address? Two nine one six five. Okay, one six five two two dot one. Okay. Yeah, you can see it says unroutable. Yeah. The, the ping is going there, but I mean, it says unroutable, so we need to fix that. We need to get internet connectivity. That's the purpose for this lab. So let's undo all. Let's turn off the debug. Okay, and um, clear the math, clear the screen. So we'll just have a clear consistency. Uh, okay, so uh, what we need to do is we need to create access list first. Yeah access list and we will say uh, 10 uh, that is the number that we give the access list permit 192.168.10.0 and wildcard mask okay and enter okay we don't need anything else we don't need to permit anything else so let's just okay so we don't need to exit from there okay let's create ibnet and we need to create a pool of addresses yeah so let's just name it pool one and the pool of addresses that we will get is 165.201 from 5 to we will give 209.165.201.10 we'll give like five ib addresses yeah and the prefix that we're using is slash 27 that's our subnet mask yeah okay so uh, once we created that, okay, so that's what I was waiting for. MVA0 has been created, yeah, and it states it's up. If we go, let's do, sh do show IB interface brief, we will see there is a new interface that has been created and it's up, yeah. Uh, we're creating that, but it's not really enabled because we need to go under the interface and enable it. But before we do that, uh, we actually created the NAT now. Uh, it's not natting because we need to allow it here and here and here as well but we need to create it this side as well statically we created this side dynamically uh, but we haven't attached it to um, the net the IB net source list yeah so we will do that but we need to create that as well and we need to create uh, the static uh, not in here because this is a server so we don't need anything to be changing we need exactly one IP address to be shown here every time that we go out we go out as one IP address yeah so the outside wall will see us as uh, the IP address that we decided to show the, uh, the outside wall okay let's go back to our um, config and uh, create yeah since we are in global config IP not and we'll say source and uh, we'll get it from list and the list is 10 remember the access list we created uh, this access list okay we're getting it from there that's what we allowing 
and the bool of IP addresses is called bool1. Yeah, enter. So dynamic bit is done now. All we need to do is create the static. Yeah, so we'll say IB NAT, IB NAT, and source. Source, if you look at it, it's got crowd map, list, and static. So we're going for the static. And the static, the address that we need to assign the static to is this. So the server has got dot 10, you see? So that is the private address first and the public address now. 165.201.3. That's how outside world will see us, yeah? Enter. Okay, so now uh, we created our statements, but they haven't been applied yet. So we need to enable NAT on this interface, this interface, and this interface. Enable it, yeah? Okay, so let's go and let's go back and do that. Let's go to the client side first for us to 0 slash 0 and IB NAT enable. That's it. And it will take a couple of seconds for the first time that you enable, but the rest of the um, the rest of the interfaces it will not be this long. So just bear with me for a second. Yeah, and uh, it's back now. So uh, let's just go out of it and go to the other interface. See, slash one. I actually had to stop the video for a couple of seconds because I didn't want to just. Uh, sit here and do nothing so okay I did not enable and you see how quick that is uh, on the other interface the first interface might take a couple of seconds but let's go to all the interfaces that we need and we can use the arrow up as well and enable it and that's it okay let's this uh, we need to test it but before I test it let me just show I be not NVI translation okay is there any translation okay not yet so it's only one actually uh, you see but let's do it uh, let's go and bing yeah so what should we bing okay let's let's bing the same IP address remember and um, bing it so if we bing it let's see. oh success so that's good okay uh, let's go to R1 and go one more time let's see the translation so you can see that um, our local address that was our local address and has been translated as five and the port that we're using that's bad port address translation working that's the port that we've been assigned to so uh, let's ping it from the server yeah let's go here and uh, copy this I don't want to write it down I'm lazy so Okay, and ping it should be success as well. But how do we see it from our translation? So, okay, uh, where is 172? Okay, so that's 172. The IP address that it will always get, the always outside world see us is dot three, you see? Because that's statically, that's what we assign statically. And the port address that we got is zero. So, uh, that's that's good okay let's let's ping one more uh let's let's check not bing uh let's check the statistics yeah how did it happen so we have um yeah hits 18 hits we got two misses uh that's good so total active translation is three and these things expire so after a while they will just go out of the table list so you can see i mean if you look at it here earlier, there were more of them than there is now, so it expired. So um, that's that's actually that's all about it. And um, we can actually check uh, show one more command show ID Ceph and see our uh, table. Uh, we can um, whoops. We see that we have a default route and the default next hub is dot two. So it's just telling us what we already know. That's that's all about it. Uh, thanks. For